all 50 states and did it in a record time of 33 days and X, 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 X hours and minutes. I that was a crazy details. schedule you guys did to put that together. He literally, it was bizarre because you had, you couldn't fly, say, launch at the at the border of New Mexico and fly into Texas that to count, count two states. That was one flight. You had to launch and land and then go across a border and then launch and land in each individual state. And there were days where he did three and sometimes four states in a single day, which was pretty impressive. Just continuing to monitor the official radio traffic this morning with, uh, we're on the radio with our uh, flight officials. We're on the radio with our stage folks. We were on a different radio, <laughs> three different radios here, as well as to continue to try and talk about what's going well, on with you. Well, you're on all those radios. I'm watching yeah, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got the, get, I've get, got the hard job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody was just asking, are we going to be live during any of those radio controlled uh, balloon ascensions and inflations? And I think the answer is yes. Yeah, because they'll be setting up. We have a, a couple of rows designated out there for our ride balloons. Rainbow Riders celebrating 40 years of being in the ride business company. They'll have a number of balloons out there that they will be taking people on their bucket list balloon rides yeah. every single day. And they're one of the first ones to leave the field once we get mass ascension underway. And then the remote controls will kind of move into that spot. So we should see them set up somewhere between the first and second wave towards the end of the second wave. So yes, we'll be able to see them and point them out. And you know what's really fun is um, most of them are being home built. It, and indeed. so they are making them in the colors and design and replicas of their big balloons. That's right. I was going to mention uh, Zarek, who is a Zarek Wells, who is a past champion here at Fiesta from last year, from defending last champion. year, defending champion, and his wife Karen have gotten really heavily into Karen, especially has gotten heavily into RC ballooning and building the balloons, and they have what I call them mini me's mini because me's. it's literally <laughs> a, a baby yeah. replica of their full size balloon, and um, yeah. So we'll get to see a lot of those, and many of them are home-built, and a lot of them are balloon pilots. A lot of people getting into the sport here in the States are balloonists who already have and fly a registered hot air balloon and now are building mini-me's, replicas, radio control of the in the form of a radio-controlled balloon. There so is a very special balloon, as a matter of fact, that we see on the screen. A couple of them, isn't it? Yes, the two Balloon Fiesta balloons. Yes. The one that you can barely see on the back side of that is the Spirit of Fiesta. That one's been around for a few years, but the one in the forefront of the screen with the nice turquoise and the Fiesta 50, that is Fiesta Gold. You may remember, during Balloon Fiesta last year, I that do. balloon was built here. Here. Yep. I mean, they did some cutouts ahead of time, right. but did all the sewing and rigging here at Balloon Fiesta, yeah. and we stood it up on the final Saturday. We've been flying that balloon in different places around the country, um, trying to uh, just tell people about Balloon Fiesta and help them understand that we are celebrating the 50th Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta as well. And... Uh, Those will be our balloons of the day this morning. Judy Nakamura, who's the vice president. Of the board of directors of the Balloon Fiesta will be flying Fiesta Gold. Ray Bear is flying the other Fiesta balloon. Um, Ray is also on the board of directors. Right and a former uh, designated pilot examiner here in the Albuquerque area. He's, he's you talked about those licenses. Yeah. Ray used to be the guy that gave you that check ride flight. Yeah. And Ray will be flying our balloon camera this morning. So we're balloon camera is there. You're getting these shots looking up inside the balloon as well. And that's coming from our Balloon Fiesta Live crew. That is, and, and that camera will end up in the balloon when it takes in flight. In flight, absolutely. And I would mention that Ray Bear is also a past president of the Balloon Federation of America. I had the privilege of working with Ray on the board of directors some years ago. Um, as I've been editor of Ballooning Journal, the official publication of the BFA for 22 years now, 
and uh, Ray as president of the BFA for um, at least one term, maybe two, I forget. But he used to be my boss, so I have to be nice to Ray. Oh, there you go. Well, actually, I don't have to be nice to him anymore. I used to have to be nice to him. No, Ray, Ray's a great, great, great guy. As is his, uh, as is Dave, his son. Yes. You know, know them both. Both good friends. They have uh, the Bears have been heavily involved in Balloon Fiesta, and Dave actually runs the rally up in Colorado Springs over Labor Day weekend. Labor right. Day liftoff. You're the announcer up at that event, as I recall. I I am. Yeah. So we're uh, working our way towards getting our balloons of the day inflated. And I also see our Krispy Kreme balloons I starting was about to, to say, inflate. Okay. Yep, I see. So you, you see where we're going now. I know where you're going with it. Go yeah. ahead. So Krispy Kremes, we normally set up 13 balloons. Right. Baker's Dozen, marking the original 13s. And right. there's a set of pilots that do that. Uh, every morning we do Krispy Kreme. This morning, we are inviting the 13 balloons that represented the original 13 at Coronado yesterday to stand their balloons up and be the Krispy Kreme glow this morning. Right. And the first one of those is starting to inflate. We just saw it on the right side of the screen there, and you may notice it looks like a world balloon. It does. So the story there is Sid, we mentioned, had lots of balloons. He basically had a whole balloon company here. And the name of his company originally was the World Balloon Championships because they were organizing the World Hot Air Balloon Championships right. here. When they moved on beyond that, then they changed it to World Balloon Corporation, and he started making world balloons. And I've forgotten how many he made. There was New World and Perfect World small and Ultra world. world and Future yeah. World and Small World. They had all kinds of them. And so in honor of the 50th and to remember Sid for all of those types of things, this is a brand new balloon. It made its first flight yesterday. It is called Beautiful World. Yes. And a little more of the backstory is that Sam, if I'm telling this correct, and you will correct me if I'm wrong, Sam really had the initial idea for Fiesta Gold, yes. the 50th anniversary balloon. And the balloon we that, built last year. Right, and brought that to fruition. And one of the great moments last year was when he took Jewel Cutter in the balloon to see it and be around it. And Jewel was so impressed with that that she wanted to do something this year to remember and honor Sid's memory. And she talked with Sam and said that, you know, if they had this balloon built, then would Sam take the balloon and fly it and use it to promote and remember Sid's and so the balloon is not only a replica of Sid's world balloon, but if you look closely, you'll see little stars and hearts that represent places around the world that have special meaning to Jewel and Sid. Yes. Just a, a, an incredible human story um, about the friendships that we make in this sport. Yep. And um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing tribute to, to Sid and well done by everyone that was involved in that. I love that shot of the balloon and then the video wall with the balloon on the <laughs> video wall behind yeah. it. And then it goes on from there. That's great. I did talk to Jewel uh, a number of times over the last few days especially. And Jewel wanted to talk a little bit more about why this is called Beautiful World. And the idea there is that she wants people to remember that ballooning and especially balloon fiesta really lets you kind of escape all the other things and remember that this is an oasis, that this is a beautiful place and a beautiful experience. And she just wants everyone to enjoy and remember and celebrate the beautiful world event that this has become. Well said and most appropriate. Thank you, Jewel, for, for everything that you've done. She's, uh, she's an incredible lady. It was such a joy to see her last evening, and hopefully we'll see her again this week, but uh, always fun to see my friend Jewel and catch up with her. Marilyn I'm Hunt is watching from home. Hi, I'm Marilyn. I'm going to let you catch up here while I do some quick uh, yeah, communication okay. things here. Go right ahead. Also, um, Nell, uh, who I did the shout-out to earlier, Nell uh, said hello. She's watching this morning, so uh, good to see that. Just uh, checking around the field, now we can see, uh, we talked about Beautiful World, another one of those very special uh, replicas of the original 13, uh, the white orb that you may be able to see out in uh, the center part of the field there with the red parachute top from our vantage here on the rooftop studio. That is the replica of the Roadrunner Coyote balloon. There it is on the screen. See the white balloon with the red top? You can just see uh, a bit of the Roadrunner on the side of the balloon. 
Uh, and if you look closely now, Fiesta Gold is standing up, and there you can see the silhouette of Sid Cutter on the parachute top of the balloon. Many really special features about these balloons that you really can uh, have to get into uh, and, and learn about to know the nuances of the designs of some of these very special balloons that we have with us here this morning. That silhouette up there basically mimics the statue, the statue that's that in is over front by of the Sid, yep. Sid Cutter Pavilion. Yeah, and, and I think that's the piece that really got Jewel started. Um, uh, really brought it home for her that you were talking about. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And have you seen have you seen the statue? Yes. You know, and 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 I know people are going to go on and on about me talking too much about Scotland. In Scotland, there's the statue. They have a it has a traffic cone on its head. It's a great tradition. I was <laughs> just blown away when I saw the picture of the statue of Sid wearing a 50th Fiesta shirt with a cap and a cigar in his hand. Yeah, it's top like, hat. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, top hat. Right, exactly. Um, and, and even Jewel, when I saw her last night, she said, have you seen the statue? St Sid is celebrating the 50th. And yes, I said, he yes, is. I saw it. And he is. Jewel, uh, Jewel and Sam Park's wife, Winna, are instrumental in dressing Sid up every oh, year. Oh, really? Yeah. I wondered who did that. And yeah. I, I hope they had permission so that, I mean, I know it was done in good taste. And I, I was hoping it wasn't just some prank thing that had nope. been done. Yeah. It's good to know that it, it, it had some uh, official um, um Sanction to it, if you yeah. will, I guess. So yeah. there's Beautiful World standing up. The other thing that wasn't clear in the initial um, indications we had of the balloon is all the flags that are hanging as pennants around the base uh -huh. of that balloon, all the different places that Sid has reached out and touched in different oh, places. Oh, okay. And then, of course, in, in 72, Sid flew a balloon called Roadrunner. There was no artwork on it. It was just right. a vertical, different color striped balloon around here. But... Since he started this thing and it kicked off, he then came back in 73 with a white balloon with the Roadrunner on one side and the Coyote on the other side. And that actually was on the cover of the 1973 and I believe 74 programs. It is. I've got it was at home. Big icon around those first world championships. My friends Barbara Fricke and Peter Cuneo decided that they wanted to honor that legacy and those I times as well. So they have built that white one we were just looking at with the red top, and that is a replica of the Roadrunner Coyote balloon. It's a little bit smaller. The first one was 105,000 cubic feet. This is 90,000. You can kind of see the Coyote from this side. We were yeah. seeing the Roadrunner from the other side. But it has the pennants. It has the red top. It has the red and white um, skirt at the bottom. So they unveiled that balloon. Now, they told the local balloon club about it on Tuesday, but it basically made its first official flight yesterday. Now, because it's home built, it's an experimental, and it needed um, some test flight hours in it. So for the last uh, month, we've been testing that balloon and putting test flights in it. Trying to fly it in secret. Try it, yeah. As much as you can. Yeah. How do you hide a balloon? <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go fly a balloon, but don't look. Don't look. Yeah. Don't take pictures. <laughs> don't look. I fell. Yeah. <laughs> and if you do look, don't post it anywhere. So they're standing yeah. it up out there now. Well, and, and you had the honor of uh, putting some of those hours on I, that balloon. I did. I got, the, I got the last 45 minutes on it before yesterday's flight. So that was, uh, that was an honor to be able to fly that. Flies like a dream. So Good we're seeing some of the others out there as well. Standing up on the right, that's... Um, it's Gary Moore. Yeah, uh, it, and uh, um, I always call it the Pink Floyd balloon, and that's not the name of it. Um, well, time it, it piece. Ends in time piece, time 2020, piece. I yeah. think, in that. And off to the left of there, that's Bill Lee uh, in the New Mexico the True, True balloon. Lee. Yep. And so uh, True Lee, and I should call up my list to tell you who they are actually representing as we stand these up again. These were ones that we flew yesterday from Coronado, representing the original 13. For the 50th, um, but the event has always had uh, a very good ongoing relationship with the Chuck Jones studio. Um, I, I'm kind of curious. I'm not sure I know how that ever got started. Um, I'm not exactly sure either, other than I think um, my sense is the early days, we kind of just picked up on those guys and somehow got connected with them and started using those. And then we kind of moved away from that for many, many years. Right. And as we got closer to the 50th, we, re I think, reached out to them and said, you know, we gallery 
they continue to, to kind of manage all that. So we were talking with them, and so we decided that we would make a series of four posters featuring those characters. Exactly, yeah. And it turned into a series of five. Five, <laughs> right. And so In part because of the pandemic. Exactly. Yes. So kind of a, a good news thing there. And so it was, uh, yeah, it's been really great. And it's really kind of, um, it worked so well over the last three or four years that now here in year five, it has really exploded. Yeah. And it's really great. Chuck Jones, Craig and Chuck Jones uh, gallery down, have a gallery and a tent down. there on the field they've got a lot of chuck jones original oh prints. i've got to get by there you've got to go by yeah. and see that they've been in business since the 70s and first time have made a pin oh my god it's got pepe le pew on it uh, that's not going to be around very long yeah at all nice heart in that so it's going to be a great uh well i still have because i i remember that relationship from when i was flying here years ago and uh the chase flags for a number of years were uh, sponsored by the chuck jones studio and so each one had a, a coyote road, roadrunner theme. You had that, and I've got a couple of those chase flags at home in and my guess what? memorabilia. We haven't done chase flags for a number of years. They're back this year. Oh, really? We and brought them they, back. Yes. And they're Chuck Jones. Yes, they are. Illustrations, outstanding. Yes, they are. So you'll see those on our trucks as well. Well, if any pilot out there doesn't want their chase flag when Fiesta is done with, <laughs> please come see me. I'll trade you an official announcer pin for one, or maybe two pins. So Judy Nakamura, who has the uh, Fiesta Gold Balloon, that's the one we see in the forefront there, she is representing Carter Tweet, who was the one of the original pilots. And okay. Carter is still alive. There are four of the original 13 who still, are still alive. With us? Yeah. Three of them are here. Outstanding. And the families are here for all of the others. The Fiesta Balloon we've been talking about that Ray Bear is flying represents Gene Dennis, and he is another one of the surviving pilots. We mentioned the... Um, Dark Side 2020 is your Pink Floyd balloon. Okay. Dark Side is its name these days. Dark Side 2020, that's Gary Moore, and he is representing Dennis Floden, who is the third surviving pilot who happens to be here Captain as well. Captain Fogg. Yeah. And if I can kind of go from the right side of that picture, if you guys will just stay on that for a minute. The teal one there is the Realty One balloon that's being flown by Jaybird Mason. He is representing Bill Cutter. Bill was Sid's, Sid's brother. brother. Yes. Yep. And was uh, instrumental there in the very first flight that Bill and Sid ever took in a balloon. Unintentional which is a flight. <laughs> depending on who you talk well, to. Well, okay, that's the story I've to. always heard. Yeah, yeah. Next to that is the crystal blue balloon of Toby Browns. He is representing Brett's, uh, Brett Brent sorry, Stockwell. And then next to that, let's see, that is... Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Oh, Flying Circus with Neil Jackson. And that is, he is representing Oscar Kratz. We mentioned that um, Barbara and Peter, Barbara Fricky and Peter Cuneo have the Roadrunner Coyote Balloon. They are representing Wilma Picard. So people always ask, when was the first female pilot at Balloon Fiesta? Year one. In 1972. That's year right. Year one. In fact, we talked about this being a Roadrunner Coyote Balloon race. Yep. Wilma came in Wilma second. Wilma came in second. That's right. Wilma came in second. So the um, orange and yellow one that's kind of a little on the left of the screen there, that is our Krispy Kreme balloon being flown by Jeff Duff. And he is representing Don Picard, Wilma's husband, who came in first. Yes. His distance was 184 feet. Wilma's was 206, so and only 20 <laughs> feet difference. But think of that distance, 184 feet. We just finished a world championship where first and second place would have been separated by millimeters. Yeah. Millimeters. Yeah. S mere fragments of an inch. Yep. And yet in 1972, 100 plus feet was first place. We've come a long way, baby. We have come a long way. There's the yep. Krispy Kreme uh, logo on the side of the balloon. Of course, Krispy Kreme, always the sponsor of this um, sort of interim uh, activity from that brings us from the Dawn Patrol show up to the flight of the nation, uh, the flight of the uh, uh, balloon of the day, sorry. And we are getting close to our uh, opening ceremonies and our 
national anthem, some special activities going on as well. Right. One of the other uh, shots that we had out there was the um, solid orange balloon out there. That is Orange Crush, and that is being flown by David Bristol, and he is representing Carl Steffen. Although at the moment, it looks like he, has he was going up, and now the top's been yeah, pulled Yeah, the out. top's been pulled, and he's deflating, so maybe they're going to reset something and start over. And actually beyond them, I do see our I think our rainbow ride, riders ride are balloons. And yeah. here's a shot of the flag being prepared. And that would be the uh, Exxon Mobil balloon um, standing up right behind the back of that shot. And you can see we're in the spirit of Fiesta balloon looking at the Fiesta Gold balloon right next to us. Yep, and you can see there uh, around Fiesta Gold, one of the special uh, nuances to the design of that balloon is that there are replica images of the original 13 balloons on that uh, 50th Fiesta balloon. That was another one of the surprises. Not only that we were made this balloon here last year, but when we unveiled it, all of those all balloons of those around the side and, there. and the and replica the, of Sid at yeah, the top. The silhouette of Sid up at the top, yeah. Yeah, I can still remember the excitement when they inflated that on the last, uh, actually it was going to be on Sunday, the closing day for Fiesta, and uh, last year the weather was questionable, or the forecast looked like it would be questionable, so we moved it up to the final Saturday. Um, and I can remember in the excitement on the field as people gathered around to see that balloon inflated for the first time. There's Orange Crush standing up There now. he is. Got yeah. whatever he needed reset. Yeah. Rainbow Riders now beginning to take shape uh, on a couple of rows back from the Krispy Kreme group. And uh, they just celebrated their 40th anniversary of operations. Yeah, pretty yeah. incredible. Scotty Appleman, our good friend who runs Rainbow Riders. Um, congratulations to him and uh, his entire team. I've got some family coming out uh, from Texas tomorrow, a couple of my cousin and uh, her husband. And uh, in our various texts, she had said that they were uh, hoping to take a balloon ride. And I, so I said, well, you need to get in touch with Rainbow Riders. I don't know if it was too late by then or not, because I know sometimes they sell out very quickly. They were sold out months in advance. I, well, I would have thought so for the months 50th. Months in advance yeah. this year, yeah. So I don't know if they're getting a balloon ride um, or, or not. My, my, su my suspicion would be probably not. I think they were probably too late in planning that this year. But, uh, but they'll be here and uh, hopefully going to come say hello to us on the roof tomorrow morning. That will be fun. Yeah. My cousin Patty is uh, daughter of my... Uh, my mom's brother, Uncle Don. This is a good time to Betty. talk about the, the design of a balloon. You see that fabric that's kind of just hanging loose there. That is the parachute top, the one we talked about with Sid, et cetera, on the Fiesta Gold balloon. Right. But uh, that is the vent that is being tabbed in by, with Velcro tabs by, the, by those crew folks. That's only held in by the Velcro tabs when it's on the ground. It's on the on ground, the side. right. Air once pressure holds it in place once the balloon's inflated. And they'll pull all those Velcro tabs loose once they stand up. And then the rope coming from the center of that is the crown line controlled by a crew person who will use that to help stabilize the balloon on inflation and use it to help bring the balloon down on deflation. And so they'll continue to put those tabs in as the air fills in and they'll stretch it out so that it gets nice and fully packed with cold air before they ever turn yeah. the burners on. That's a maneuvering bit. I, you know, when I'm trying to explain that to crowds at balloon rallies, I'm sure you may use the same uh, uh, analogy. I explain it a lot of times. It's like a cork in a bottle. You know, yeah. it, you can pop the cork and everything comes out of the bottle, but you can put the cork back in and it seals and it, it back in place. Yeah. Dave Turley just uh, said hello on our feed. And Dave, I hope you noticed I am wearing your pin this morning. Dave is one of the pilots over in England that was at Longleat with us, and he came up and handed me this pin right oh there you go right there and said you know be sure that you're wearing that at fiesta he's gonna be looking for it so dave i hope you saw that i'm wearing your pin this morning haven't done a lot of pin trading send, yet send money yes yeah, send money <laughs> right yeah or more pins uh, that's a promotional announcement that went worldwide the impressions are goodness knows how many so you owe me a lot of money dave um, <laughs> yeah no that just you know again speaks to what jewel was expressing in her thoughts that what an amazing world it is that we live in and, and, and how ballooning does 
help you to make friends. I've got friends around the world that I would never know if it were not for the sport of ballooning. It's now time for the national anthem and the launch of our balloon of the day. Please direct your attention to the balloons and the national anthem from the choir of the Cathedral of St. John's. Quieter from the Cathedral of St. John. All of our burners from our balloon pilots and a flyover by the Chili Express. Our presenting sponsor balloon from Exxon Mobil. We're powered by Exxon Mobil this year, also airborne, flying the New Mexico State flag with us. And we're going to watch for the Chile Express to come back over the field in just a few moments. Look at that aerial shot. I'm looking at a monitor that you can't see uh, where we're seeing the, our balloon pass to live camera that's, in the balloon. Yeah, that's the delay. They just saw that. Okay. That's right. the delay shot. All right. So the people did see they it. They saw Good. it. Yeah, yeah. You're just catching up. Well, I'm not sure which monitor to look at to see what. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably the only place in the world where I am technically challenged to see what's going on. Wow, that was an awesome shot. There's the, look at that. There's the, the balloon yeah. with the flag. There's the chili flight and then all, all the burners. Got it all in one picture. And the shot from our balloon cam is we're just south of the field. There was a quick shot of our glamping area. And our chilly flight should be swinging back around here momentarily from the east side of the field. I think I hear him. Well, I'm looking to the east. There's a helicopter out there. There's also a drone up over there. There is one the helicopter drone that is allowed to fly here at Balloon Fiesta. Well, that's probably, actually, there's a couple of media helicopters over around the Sandy, yep. as it looks like. They can be up there. Yeah. But there is a TFR, or a temporary flight restriction, for four miles around the park. So no aircraft and drones or aircraft. Here comes the Chile Express back. Right. No aircraft other than those specifically authorized and registered with Balloon Fiesta can be in that area four miles around the park. Smoke on from Chile Flight. Well, if you look right around the corner of the building, you'll see the drone just yeah, I can over see the it. Arroyo there. That bird was not a drone. <laughs> Big bird just flew right past in front of us. Here comes Chile Flight. As they do a formation breakout to all the different directions of the compass. A group of volunteers that fly these planes as part of the Chile Express and do these flyovers at a number of events in the Albuquerque area, New Mexico. We appreciate the Chile Flight Express guys 
for giving us our dual flyover this morning to get us started at the 50th Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. And that said, we are now airborne. First with Dawn Patrol, then our balloons of the day. And there goes Gary Moore. There goes Gary, yep. In his, what did I say? Dark side. Dark side. Dark yeah, side I, I called it timepiece. I think that was an earlier name. That was name. an earlier name. There goes uh, Beautiful World. And is now, is Sam flying that today or not? Should be, should be Mark Sullivan Mark flying, Sullivan it flying it today. this morning. Yeah. Sam's got a few other responsibilities to take care of since he's the director of operations that's of true. Uh, Albuquerque Balloon well, and, and that's another thing that's changed this year. Usually, our officials, the folks like Sam and um, the balloon meisters and the safety officials and all of those chief flying officers are usually on their little tower just right in off front of the us. corner in front of our rooftop studio. And instead, this year, they've been moved way down the other side of I uh, can just row. see the corner see of the tower from my view. You probably can't see it. I can't see it. See it You'd because have to of lean our, in a lot farther. Yeah, our inter well, I'd fall over if I leaned in further. Yeah. But our interview set just to my left here, I can't see them. But they're way down there. So normally we have this friendly chit-chat going back and forth between them when we can see them and smile and wave and talk to each other. But we can't do that this year. So our Krispy Kreme balloons, those that were representing the original 13, are now getting airborne. Yep. We already talked about Gary. There goes Bill Lee in New Mexico. True. I saw the Krispy Kreme balloon up. The Roadrunner Coyote is up. I Flying Circus is up. And we already mentioned Beautiful World. There goes Orange, Orange Crush. Crush. Yep. Uh, Exxon Mobil, their balloon is standing up uh, so here in front of us. So they have two balloons. Yeah, so they well, have two I'm balloons, of course, this year as yeah. the presenting sponsor. So Tristan McLean flew the balloon off with the New Mexico State flag. Okay. And this so would this be Matt McClinton balloon. flying the second one. Ah, okay. So Matt's here flying that for them. Yep. Well, good. The Roadrunner is going to come right over the stage. Oh, you know, I should. Camera time. Yep, camera time. Spectator time. Camera's at the ready. Yeah, you know, we gotta 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 play with the. You know, gotta be spectator <laughs> as well as announcer here. It would be nice if I had put the battery in my camera. I got to dig out my backpack. Oh no! Well, I can use my phone, but my big camera needs a battery, and I put it on charge last night so that I would have plenty of power this morning, and I went to take a picture, and I thought, why is the screen black? Well, it's because there's no battery in the camera. Hey, I think Ruth has one of our rover reporter, Ruth Lind, is with us again this year, and I think she's got a live interview with, what was it, the 1970? One of the early, I don't remember exactly what we'll find out, but he has his 1972 jacket. He was a balloon jacket. meister one year. Let's just let Ruth tell yeah, us. Tell Ruth. us, Ruth. Take it away. He does. Uh, hi, you guys. I'm here with Mark Wilson. He was the 1979 Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta Balloon Meister. What's it like to be back after all this time? Oh, this is amazing. It just uh, oh, what I was talking earlier about the uh, uh, when I was the balloon meister, it was like 300 balloons, and I thought, you know, we're not ever going to be able to more, do more than that. And, and just watching this thing grow. And watching uh, the the community, and that's what makes this work. It's just it's just so cool to be here and see it and see it from this perspective. Now, remind me where it was in 1979. Where in Albuquerque? It was at the what they called Sibs Field, which is almost in the middle of the town now. And uh, so the first one, of course, was at the the uh, the fairgrounds, and. Uh, so it's uh, Sibs Field to the, uh, that way, but uh, much smaller than what this field is. And it was dirt then? It was, no, there, yeah, it was dirt, and uh, it was dirt and mesa. Dirt and this, and this, 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 you know, this is luxury stuff. And but how many times have you been back to Balloon Fiesta since 79? Well, I, I'll sneak in at night and watch the glow and buy uh, uh, a $25 uh, corn dog. <laughs> And uh, so I, I come once a, once a year, and uh, I, I still live in Albuquerque, but uh, I don't uh, get to get up way too early. <laughs> yeah, we all do that. Yeah. All of us balloonists, we're used to yeah. that. Now, guys, I'm going to have Mark turn around because Mark has on his original 1972 balloon fiesta jacket. So can you turn and show our camera?
That is so wow. much fun. That was over at Mark, the, uh, the, that, uh, was that was at the uh, fairgrounds, 13 balloons, and I thought, man, you know, we'll never see that many balloons again. That, never <laughs> see that many <laughs> balloons again, and here we are. Well, Mark, thank you so much You're for welcome, joining yeah. us this morning, and I hope you enjoy Fiesta this oh, year. this is great. I'm having a great time. Great. Ken, Glenn, back to you. Okay, Ruth, thanks. Good to see Mark. He actually showed up at a local balloon club meeting uh, a month or so ago, and it was uh, great to actually meet him. Uh, I'd seen pictures and heard about him and all those types of things. You know, just to kind of clarify things here a little bit, because I see there's some misconfusion um, on our, our chat fields here as well. The What is considered the first balloon fiesta is that gathering for KOB of 13 balloons at Coronado, at Coronado Center, Center right. on April 8th, 1972. Right. It was after that event, or even I think started during that event, that Sid and Tom Rutherford, who was the KOB representative here, were both approached to put on the first World, World Hot Air Balloon Championships. And so they did put that together, and the first World Balloon World Hot Air Balloon Championships were held at the state fairgrounds in 1973, February of 1973. Right. So that's where the, I think this first confusion comes in. Yeah, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, the, the first the gathering or the first world. world. Well, the first gathering, and then we held the first the first um, world championships. But the Coronado Center gathering is the first fiesta. That's what we consider to be the first fiesta, right. exactly. And then, of course, we, like I said, we had the first Worlds, then we had a rally in 74, then we held the second World Championship Hot Air Balloon Race um, in 1975. And that was the first year we moved to Sims Field that Mark was just talking about. Yeah. And it was during that first World Championship that Sid came up with the idea of having the launch directors in the black and white right. zebras or referee suits. And that's how that became a tradition here at uh, Balloon Fiesta Park. That is it. And while we were at the fairgrounds in 73 and 74, most of the spectators were up in the grandstands, in the bleachers there. But of course at Coronado, no, no restrictions for being able to get uh, near the balloons. And that has carried on through today because this is one of the few places you can actually be on the field, on the flight line, if you will. Yeah. Um, with balloons taking I posted a picture of Fiesta on my Facebook page just a few days ago that, that had, uh, actually I didn't post it, Benny Boss, one of our official photographers, Benny High, wherever you are out there this year, uh, posted it and it was a few of the balloons with you know massive crowd all around it. And, and I shared that on the, my Facebook page and someone commented and said, are you kidding? Are people really allowed to get that close to the balloons? Yeah. Because at a lot of balloon festivals, you're stuck behind a, a, a rope or a fence or a crowd line and um, and I, I said, yeah, it's, you know, that's an actual shot that, you know, at Albuquerque, people are right out there with the balloons. So we just saw the Zia balloon go right over the top. Tom McConnell flying that. Dr. Tom. Dr. Tom. Is on yep. the board of directors. That's um, son flying that one. Right. That's a multi-generational uh, ballooning family. Uh, Dr. Tom has written a number of articles for me at Ballooning uh, Journal, the magazine, and uh, been a great friend for years. His whole family very much into the sport of ballooning. And we are uh, seeing the Rainbow Riders, our ride balloons, get airborne. Just a moment ago, there was a shot of the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center balloon. And there, of course, you see the Rainbow Riders balloons. 38 different ride balloons here, much bigger balloons, carrying many more people airborne on their bucket list. Yeah, you can take a look and compare. You see those Rainbow Rider balloons in the baskets are quite large. And you can start, you can try to count the number of little heads that you can see poking yeah. up over the side. Um, many more in those balloons. Uh, they carry a lot of times at 12, 14, 16, 18 passengers. Uh, the very large balloons, uh, as opposed to the typical sport balloons you'll see flying uh, here that are 77, 90,000 cubic feet, 105,000 cubic feet, carry a pilot in two, three, sometimes four passengers. I just saw the Netflix balloon go by, John Bolger flying Dakota Star. I'm looking up, I just mentioned about the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center, he's already starting to turn. So those winds up higher that were turning to the north, that has dropped, so you don't have to go nearly as high to turn around and go back to the north. 
And there is a brand new Kubitschek built balloon for the United States Air Force. I was gonna say, off we go in the, the wild, wild blue yonder. yonder. Rusty Manning flying the Air Force balloon for us. The Air Force, of course, celebrating 75 years. Glad to have the Air Force here. Kind of a late decision to actually build that balloon. Kubitschek factory stepped up, made it happen. So we are happy to have them here. <laughs> Here's a shot from our balloon cam looking down at the river. And some yeah. of the other balloons. There's the Krispy Kreme balloon down below. This and balloon. there's the flag still hanging, looking straight down. So that's what it feels like to be up in a balloon looking over the side of the basket. This balloon directly in front of us, uh, red with the yellow and blue spiral, the registration number G Daddy, is uh, formerly the balloon of Sam Edwards. Sam, uh, longtime veteran balloonist, past, uh, I think past president, or certainly a member of the board of directors of the Balloon Federation of America. And uh, Sam sadly passed away just a few months ago. Actually, not even that long ago, maybe. Um, Tomas couple Hora is a couple of months ago, and Tomas Hora is uh, flying the balloon. But that uh, the Texas Twist, I think, was the name of it. G Daddy, the registration for uh, Sam being a grandfather, and uh, his daughter Sherry Edwards White is here flying her balloon. She'll be launching in a few moments. But um, Sherry still calls it Twisted. Yeah, but uh, yeah, great friend uh, Sam and his dear wife Jean. Uh, Wonderful friends of mine for years and years and years out of Houston, Texas. Here's another brand new balloon. I hopefully can pick it up here. The Visit, Visit Albuquerque, Albuquerque balloon. The stage yeah. camera can get it. Real, I mean the um, rooftop camera can get it. Notice we're looking at it and it's green. I was going to say when it turns, is there a red chili on the other side? Here it comes yeah, around I, the other I, side. I, I, I saw that coming. So the name of the balloon, red or green? Red or Visit green? Albuquerque. Yeah. And uh, when they when we first saw a picture of that, it was the green side. Then they posted the red side. Oh, perfect. Now you there can you see can the see, green yeah, and the right red smack down the on, middle. on it's either side there. The, the color pattern changes completely. It's red, you know, it's it red and like yellow on one yeah, side. It looks like a totally different balloon. Yeah, and it's green, shades of greens on the other side. That's, that's awesome. That's a brilliant pattern like that. Rainbow Riders operating that for the Visit Albuquerque group. There goes uh, one of the Rainbow Rider balloons with the KOV New Mexico. Channel 4 banner TV, on the yep. side, TV. The TV station and the radio station were basically the same organization, the same entry back in 1972. Yeah. The radio, they've since broken off and they're now owned by different companies. So the TV station is still KOB. The radio station is KKOB. Right. Well, and that's not that unusual. Um, some years ago, I worked at WOAI Radio in San Antonio, Texas. And back in the day, there was a WOAI Radio and a WOAI TV, and they were owned uh, by the same conglomerate, but eventually they split, and uh, now the TV station is uh, KMOL, I think. Uh, it's been a while since I was there. Um, but a lot of times, uh, early in broadcasting, uh, broadcast owners would buy into both radio and television licenses, uh, and then eventually they often split, and when they did, usually you would end up with different call signs. Yeah, that was one of those uh, radio, obviously, out there. And as TV came into being, radio stations just added the video signal. And that's why they were together. Right. I'm looking up high. In fact, there's, uh, there's this beautiful, beautiful world, world way, way, way up, up high, high there. Yeah. And the sun is hitting the balloons that are up probably close to 1,000 feet. Yep. And we're starting to see the colors really start to pop. There's the uh, there. Montgolfier replica that's up there as well. One you of the uh, representing of the original 13. You can see the sun bouncing off of that, and uh, the sky continuing to get lighter and lighter to the east as the sun is coming up, but has not yet crested above the 10,000-foot-tall uh, Sandia Mountains. I can see it out on the West Mesa. It's yeah. starting to head our way. We saw Cynthia Seal standing up a few moments ago. Now airborne with Pat Walt at the controls. Just right over the top of us. Yeah, yesterday afternoon, as I left the museum after the Hall of Fame ceremony, um, the Sandias took on that momentary pink, pink glow from which they get their name, of course. Watermelon. Watermelon. And uh, yeah, and it just, it was one of those moments when I went, you know, just had a, <sighs> went back in Albuquerque. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
There's the Mission Linen Supply balloon over to the far left, the far west of the field, yellow with a uh, kind of a blue and red starburst on the side of it. Mission Linen has been here, gosh, at least since I started here in 1990. They are a long, 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 long time uh, sponsor and participant here at Balloon Fiesta. Always good to have them back with us. Jerry Graff and the name of the balloon is actually Lofty. Lofty, it, yeah. okay. There's Annie, the little ladybug. Yeah, we'll see some of those special shapes uh, during the course of the week. Well, we saw Cynthia Seal. I see uh, Humpty Dumpty inflating out there as well. Um, you mentioned Annie. So we'll see a number of special shapes during the course of the week. But, of course, Thursday and Friday coming up uh, several days from now is when we really salute the special shapes with our rodeos and our glodeos. Of course, they've changed the name of Annie. It's now She's a Lady. Well, okay. These guys like to do that to us announcers. Yeah. We learn the names and who's flying it and all that stuff, and then they go and change the name. Well, and then you have the Hartzels who build three balloons, four balloons, that all look exactly alike, and they won't do did anything. Did you see that they have new ones? I did, and did you know they look exactly alike again? They do. I'm not sure the new ones are going to be here, though. I don't know. We'll have to wait and because see. Because they were over in, at the Worlds, which yes, just were. wrapped up over yes. in uh, uh, Slovenia. Is that where the Worlds were yeah, held, I yeah. think? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I you know for years I griped at uh, Joe Hartzell about you know come on put a different colored scoop or skirt or something on each one so I could tell them apart. But nope, he and uh, Rhett and Lucas all fly identical balloons. Then they built new balloons and they're identical too. Yep. So because of the number of balloons that we have here, we launch in waves. However, the field is big enough that we can start at the south end and at the middle. And we start launching balloons from both ends and from the middle. And we'll work our way through the field. And then, again, it's so big, we have to do it a whole second time to get everyone up in the air. So we've got uh, a little while to go to get everybody up. We're still launching ride balloons, so we're only a couple, three rows into the middle of the field, and it looks like we're about to start on row B down here at this end. Yep. So. And the, the field is, is, is gridded. It's A, B, C, D. We use the letters of the alphabet starting from the south end here, working our way north, and then from east to west, it's one, two, three, four. So your launch site might be A7. And, and that would be first row, seventh position over from the east. There's Itsy Bitsy Spider, seeing it for the first time this year. Yep. There goes when she, when she's the lady. Yeah, when they're, on, when they're close down here, you can really hear up here on the roof, we can hear the cheers, which basically is, hey, someone's just launched. So, yep, there she goes. She's the lady in flight. Somebody on, on Facebook, let me see if I can. Hi, Canada. Glad you're watching. Someone pointed out that the carousel is over there. Yes, it is. Frank Campanella. Just behind that is, uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to be Billy Billy. Billy Broker in the city of Plano Balloon. Plano, where you were just a week ago, yep. uh, has an outstanding uh, hot air balloon festival. Look at the shot from the sky of all the balloons. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Because they're all headed out to the northwest. Kind of go south over the field, and depending how fast they climb, they will turn around at a few hundred feet up. It'll be about four, 500 feet or so. Uh, I've never seen this before. I'm looking at the Facebook feed, and there's like, um, what do they call that when you when you can see what's being said? It's in uh, closed captioning. Oh, uh huh. And 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 there's it's closed captioning of what we're saying. Both Facebook and YouTube have they've been working to turn that on. So yes, it's live closed uh. captioning happening on those. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Sam. Look who's just joined us up here on the tower. Our director of operations. We talked about the river. There, there it is. Moore, yeah. Dark side 2020. Going down to try and do a little splash and dash. 
The idea behind a splash and dash is to just get the bottom of the basket, the, the skids underneath. You get those wet, you don't go in deep enough right. to get, you get your feet, feet wet. wet. That's now, right. the really good news about the Rio Grande, you could go all the way and touch bottom and, and not probably get not wet. get your feet wet. <laughs> I'm not sure that's good news, but, uh, but I understand. You can't mess it up. You can't bury your, ba your basket in water yeah, up to no, your ankle, I, I up to your knees I understand or something. what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, because you, there have been years when people have done a, a you know, a, a sink and dunk in yeah. the uh, <laughs> in the Rio Grande, where yeah. suddenly your basket deep, or uh, definitely stick it in the mud there. Yeah, yeah. There goes the cottonwood mall balloon, and uh, the black, red, golden, yellow, and white band in the center. It's going to be Ted Tat uh, Ken Tatalini. I thought I recognized that balloon. Yep. There's Phillips 66 and Dos Equis. A couple more of our big sponsors here. Right in front of us, Dave Melton in his purple with the rainbow equator colors going around it. Now, we can have that. Is that purple or is that eggplant or is That's it plum? That's purple. <laughs> That's purple. We've been having that discussion about our, uh, our jackets this year. What color are they? Are they purple? Are they plum? Are they eggplant? Um, it's a unique color because my... My fleece looks purple out here in the daylight, but in indoors yesterday at the hotel, it looked blue, it looked navy blue. So who knows? What a pretty day. Oh, just, you know, what a way to start off the 50th. Just an amazing Chamber of Commerce day. There goes the city of Plano balloon and uh, Billy Billy. Billy right Broker. behind, yep. What, right behind it, the U.S. Bank US balloon Bank. With Scott, Scott McClinton. Scott McClinton, yep. The uh, Colorado flag balloon is uh, one of the uh, Rainbow Rider uh, contract balloons that come in from all around the, the country to uh, give those uh, precious balloon rides here at Balloon Fiesta. One of two. So when you see another one later, don't think, what, deja ah, vu? Came back. Oops. There are two of them. Yep, we're still from the north end of the field. We're still launching ride balloons. As Glenn just mentioned, the Colorado balloon. We saw the Jack balloon. Look at the sky already, and we're four rows into the launch. Yeah. <laughs> and look at how crowded the sky is yeah. already. There goes Humpty Dumpty. That should be. Let me verify to make sure. Well, I was going to say uh, Rich. I was going to say Rich Lawhorn, yeah. but nowadays so many balloons have gotten sold and passed yeah. on. I'm always, I'm sometimes, um, you know, because the pandemic. You know, I know you did the same thing. It was, you know, I went for two or three years without really announcing any balloon rallies and uh, kind of lost touch with some of the balloons that I've known so familiarly for, for years. And some have changed hands and some have new balloons. And so, yeah, it's, uh, I was going to say that was Rich Longhorn earlier, but. That's why sure. I um, quickly looked at the spotter to verify that it still was Rich. Well, and you know me and your spotter. Yeah. I, I, Still anti haven't spot, yeah. No, I'm not anti. I just, <laughs> I never, it's like, see, I typed in where I thought to, when Air Force took out, I typed in Air Force, but I couldn't get it to search to bring up the information. What did you do to it? I didn't there do anything to it. Right there. But how, what, what did you touch to make it search? All, right. All you have to do is touch outside the box. Well, see, that's the problem. I don't you think outside the box. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you don't have the touch. I don't. As my dad, my, my late dad would say, it just wasn't holding the mouth right. There goes the Celtic knot. Hey, there's another one. Our, here's another one of those. Here is the sloth. <laughs> it's no longer called the sloth. It's now been named. It's Tico. Huh? Yeah, that's what I said. They said, oh, that balloon is Tico. I said, no, it's the sloth. No, it's the sloth. Yeah. So, but they named it. Someone has bought it, and they've named it, so it is now Tico. Tico. Okay. So I'm saying it's Tico the sloth. There you go. Like Santa the Claus. There you go. That's <laughs> it. That's it. <laughs> I caught just a, a quick glimpse while it was on camera. Right next to it was the Chick-fil-A balloon. Right. And uh, I was, there it is. Uh, yep. and, and I was just going to mention, that's sort of become my favorite go-to restaurant. It's right on the way home to the hotel. And the last two nights, I have dined on Chick-fil-A. Um, 
Craig Kennedy flying Chick-fil-A for us this year. Oh, well. They now have a, a balloon that's basically stationed in New Mexico. Okay. We'll be flying around and doing promotional events for Chick-fil-A. Well, I'm glad to know I'm supporting my old friend Craig. Craig. There you go. Craig, of course, was the uh, uh, director of our balloon, our Dawn Patrol show for a number of years mm -hmm. and flew for Intel for a number of years. There goes the uh, a watermelon balloon. We talked about the Sandia Mountains, uh, Sandia uh, being the, the uh, Native American word for uh, watermelon. And it gets that name from that wonderful pinkish glow that it takes on. Excuse me, that the mountains take on just at sunset. Well, here goes a watermelon balloon. You can see the, the greens of the rind at the top and bottom, and then the meat of the watermelon, the pink and red inside with the um, always present watermelon seeds. Bob O'Brien flies that, and he calls it seed quoll. Seed quoll, okay. Well, we had a, a dear friend in uh, northwest Louisiana that had a watermelon balloon similar to that, and years ago when she first got it, we were all traveling to a balloon rally together, and, and we were on the radios talking between chase trucks and trying to come up with names for it, and I christened it Melonair. <laughs> and, uh, And we broadcast closed circuit to the student union building. Yeah. That was the only audience we had. We yep. Student union. But that's when I, I got behind the microphone for the first time. And uh, that was in the spring of 1972 at Lamar University. Shout out to my debate coach, Mary Alice Baker, if she's watching. My first job in radio was also in college on a closed circuit. We went to more than the student union. We also went to the dorms. Oh, well, so you were much ahead of bigger, us. Uh, well, yeah. Much smaller school, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, and Lamar now does have a, its own uh, NPR radio station. It was a, just a shot off. Um, back on the field from our balloon cam, seeing all the balloons inflated here, as well as in the sky. So there's the KKOB balloon. So KKOB is at 770 on the AM dial. Right. So it's always been KKOB or KOB 770, 770 KOB, whatever variation they were using. They're not, they're still there, but they have, or I would call it simulcast. They probably don't call it that. At 96.3 on the FM on dial. The FM side, okay. So they're starting to promote the FM side of things here, oh, okay. but you can still get them on the AM at 770. But uh, that would be Ron Curry. Ron is a very long time yes, pilot here yeah. as well. Has been flying the KOB balloon. This is probably the fourth iteration of a KKOB or a KOB balloon. Yeah. And I didn't even catch that, the 96.3 versus 770. Yeah, yep. you know, I could have. I've been that's here okay. enough just to know that. But, yeah, that's interesting. There goes Tico, the sloth, <laughs> <laughs> with his and back little, turned to us. Yeah, a little photo bombing by Craig and Chick-fil-A. Yeah, moving. There's a great shot from uh, yeah. one of our cameras where you can see on the feed the, the face of Tico. And the Chick-fil-A balloon spinning because of the turning, turning vent vents. that's in there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And Craig does a great. Must, they must be doing a rotisserie chicken. Oh! <laughs> oh, well, yeah. first bad joke for the day. There you go. Here's a new special shape for us the new tiger. Let's see, I bet I can find because I can push the buttons that says shapes, and then all I have to do is scroll till I find a picture of the tiger, which you probably already have up over there. I, I typed in are. tiger. Uh, well, see, that's cheating. I knew I'd get less balloons with Tiger. I'll let you find it. Well, thank you. There's no, that's <laughs> I thought that was Tico, but it's not, it was something else. I'll have to go back and see that. Looks like a lot more orange balloons again here. Yellow, um, still the most popular color Predominant in a balloon. color, yeah. Orange was a color you used to almost never see in a balloon. Certainly not a primary color. Right. Um, I don't know why that is, because I like orange. 
Okay, now you're going to tell me Tiger's not in here because I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Oh, he's in there. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. He's so scrolling, scrolling. What was that show? Oh, yeah, there he is. Okay. Ching. Yeah, all right. So this is Tiger flown by Craig Farrell uh, from Palmerston. What is ACT? Aruba. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the only Aruba I know is the one that's in the Beach Actually, Boys song. Actually, I think I think that that's uh, I think that's uh, uh, an autocorrect thing. I think Craig is actually from Australia. Oh. Because he was in Plano last week. Okay. Well. Yeah. So much for Sorry. your spotting. There you go. I your know. spotting. There's yeah. a whole lot of manual uh, adjustments, and I try and automate some things. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes autocorrect doesn't always work, so auto adjust doesn't always pick up the right country. Hey, you know, when pigs fly, there's Hamlet. Doug Gant flies Hamlet for us. Doug yep. moved to Albuquerque a few years ago. Yes, he did. After used, to, uh, used to live in Florida and probably glad now that he doesn't. Um, other than he has family still there. Yeah, our uh, thoughts and prayers to all the folks in Florida that were so incredibly impacted by Hurricane Ian. I know one of our balloonists here, um, Sean Askren, lost uh, an entire vacation home down there. Just oh, he did? Wiped off. Just, it was on one of those islands that's now completely underwater and oh. just absolutely wiped out. Um, another balloonist, though, Terry Dillard, uh, is on his way here. He was he and his wife, Debbie, had gotten as far as Memphis and then decided to turn around and go back when the storm changed track because they, they manage a, a marina uh, that is largely a community of uh, senior and retired citizens. They felt like they needed to be there for those people to help them. And uh, fortunately, they suffered very minor damage, so now they've loaded the balloon trailer back up and are on their way here. Probably be here tomorrow, I would think. There goes Dale Wong in Rancho Cucamonga, from Rancho Cucamonga, actually. When we were talking about the tiger earlier, somebody on the feed said, is that air valve behind the tiger? Sure, sure enough, enough. There it is. Yep. Well there it is. Well spotted. You bet. Huge cheers going up for Hamlet getting in the air. That balloon always a big favorite. It is. You know, and as well as Arabelle. And when pigs fly, which is a, a saying that you'll see on the side of the balloon, the story behind that is Doug built that balloon years ago in part as tribute to his dad because when he was a kid, and you know, you know how kids are, it's why, why, why? I'm just loving that shot from our balloon cam, which is in the Fiesta balloon. We saw the Fiesta Gold balloon, the Krispy Kreme balloon, and the um, Roadrunner Coyote balloon. All in the shot. There they are. So the Krispy Kreme on the oh, left. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the Roadrunner is the white. And, and then down at the Fiesta bottom Gold. is Fiesta Gold. Outstanding. As they get out over the Rio Rancho area and the river out Speaking there as Speaking of Fiesta well. Gold, look around. Yeah. No, I do not. Oh, thank you. There you go, sir. Look I at that. I did, thank you. I was, th was going to say, speaking of Fiesta Gold, look over your shoulder. There is Jewel Cutter. Yes. Good morning, and Jewel. Jewel has just given us beautiful world balloon pins. Thank you, Jewel. Wow, that's one that's special. Yep. With a message from Jewel on the card. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have to read that, too. Yep. I'd say Jewel we've got a... carrying on the legacy of Sid and yeah. just bringing everyone together. Speaking of bringing, bringing people together, uh, I would say she's done that. Take a look at the crowd out there today. Yep. I don't know that I've ever, it goes all the way to the Western Arroyo. I don't know I've ever seen the crowd go all the go way all across the, way the across. field. All the way across we, the yeah, field. Yeah, we spend so much time telling people to move to the West so that you can move away from some of the crowds to get over here. But right. you're right, it goes all the it, way across this morning. It literally is, you know, four, five, six people deep all the way across the field. I don't think I've ever seen that in 33 years here. Thank you for being here. And thank you for watching us on Balloon Fiesta Live. Yeah, we I are excited to bring this to you. We've not engaged nearly as much with the uh, feeds as we have in the past. Keith Berry. Hi, Keith. Nice to see you. Um, because there's just so much happening on the field this morning that's Hard drawing to keep our up. attention. Yeah. The first morning is always crazy anyway. You know, there's so much going on and kind of getting back into the flow of doing things. Coming right over the center of the field, we don't have it on the camera at the moment, is the SS America balloon being flown by Jerry Hooper. And every time I see that balloon, I'm reminded of Betsy Ross, which was the first balloon that Sid Cutter brought. 
It's not quite the same, but it had very similar. Gary's got the gold bunting up at the top. Betsy Ross's bunting was a little bit lower. I don't believe Betsy had the pennants. But every time I see that, I'm reminded of the original balloon that came to New Mexico back in 1971 that got everything kind of, got Sid interested in ballooning and doing things with ballooning. There it is. Which, of course, as he was flying it around in 71, led to the conversation for the Coronado Center in 72. A moment ago on the sh on the uh, feed, we had a picture of, uh, what is it, Pencil Boy? Yes, yeah. Looks I like I didn't see him. Yeah, he was he was just on the screen for a moment. It must, um, it must be on the uh, far north end. Yeah, he was still cold inflating, still lying okay. on the side, cold okay. inflating. Uh, but I, I had a quick shot of it that I could recognize. That's another one of those very nuanced designs because once it stands up, you'll see the pencil boys wearing sunglasses. And they're mirrored glasses. Uh, and the mirrored glasses are a reflection of a Fiesta mass ascension. I just heard our uh, camera person in our balloon cam. Yeah. He's actually taking pictures of his house. His house. He flies, <laughs> flies <laughs> over it now. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yes. now, what's the story? See this beautiful teal balloon? Kind of a teal blue with the white. Um, I was going to say storks. I don't think those are not storks, I don't think. What are those? They're birds of some sort. Um, I should remember that, but... Uh, well, since you put everything into the spotter. So he was here last year. Was he? I don't yeah. remember that. But I'm not remembering... As soon as I find it, I'll... Uh, okay. Unfortunately, blue and white are also very popular. Colors. Very popular, yeah, if you, if you just search. Okay, now how come when I put in fractal, it draws up this balloon? That's not a fractal balloon. Um, probably uh, picked up a pilot name or something. Uh, okay. Because you can search by lots of things. Well, I'm not having much luck searching by anything. Speaking of the Hartzels, as we were, and they're identical balloons there are two of them even spinning in the same direction uh, one's a little moving a little faster one's moving it? and one actually has silver outlines around the stars uh, joe hartzell and his son uh, sons rhett and lucas it may be that lucas is not here with us i'm betting that's probably joe and rhett this morning um, back from uh, slovenia and the world championships um, his, I think it's his fourth U.S. National Championship this year. Father Joe has won five. And they fly balloons that look exactly alike. I wonder if they ever switch. You know, get into each other's. Yeah, yeah I think they do. A and I think they do it just to aggravate me sometimes at <laughs> <laughs> when I'm announcing rallies. Um, There's yeah. the Tiger balloon kind of behind one yeah, of the Hartzell balloons one of the that you're talking balloons. about. Yeah. Hey, at least they're starting to go different directions now. Yeah, that's true. At least there's that. I'm thinking the one with the silver would be Joe. I think that's Joe. And, and you can also tell because Joe is a little bit shorter than uh, Rhett. And, and, usually so looking at the and usually wears a ball wears cap. A, usually wears a ball cap, exactly. And so, yeah, looking at and just the, the pilot... Yeah, tall pilot in this one. The yeah. tall pilot in this one. I'm thinking this is Rhett, who's about to pass directly overhead of us. We're giving away announcer secrets here. I though. know. You know that? Yeah, I realize yeah. that. Yeah. That's okay. We need some. Uh, we need some folks to start thinking about taking on this announcing well, job. Well, I was going to say, you know, we can't do it forever as much as we'd love. There's to. not that many of us in this profession. And, um, you know, last year, I, um, I guess it's okay to say, I actually had a conversation with you and Sam Parks about potentially making, you know, this might be my retirement song. It's not, so don't, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> when I said that went apoplectic, and uh, so I'm not retiring yet. The applicant, yeah. Not yet, but you know, it may not be far away. You never can tell. 
Although last month was was update your resume month, so was it? <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. Um, but you know, yeah. I mean, honestly, there aren't very many people around the world who do this uh, professionally, and um, which is why it's easy to be at the top of the game. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's something called job security to be had there. There is the Phillips 66 balloon standing over close to the uh, main stage area, and I think inflating just beside it is Smokey Bear. Yep. And that's is my usual point to say it is not Smokey the Bear, just like it's not Santa the Claus. The but it is name. Tico the Sloth. It is Tico the Sloth, but it is Smokey Bear and Santa Claus. There's, there's Arabelle no, too. There's no V. And you can say Arabelle the Cow if you want. Sure. If you want. Sure. Uh, or although they prefer Arabelle the Creamland Cow. Creamland Cow, of course. Of course. Hey, there's Master Yoda getting yeah. airborne. There's still one of our original uh, Krispy Kreme that was. Jay Mason yeah. still flying. Our balloon camera is still flying over there. Yeah, Philip 66, you see Brad Rice flying that. Uh, Beth Wright Smith standing up, Smokey Bear behind it. Right in front there, the snowman, that's going to be Seasons. That's Yeah, that's the Seasons balloon. And uh, just launching, talking about orange balloons earlier, the orange balloon with those multicolored swashes, I believe that will be Pat Fogue uh, flying that balloon for uh, uh, the, what is it, IMTS? Yes. Unless you're me, I like to call it the LMTS. No, no, it's I IMTS. I know. Yeah, isn't it the International Manufacturing, Manufacturing Technology, Technology Show, Trade Show? Something I, like that. I should know. I forget. Yeah. I'm glad you don't remember. No, I don't. Um, Gary yeah. Haven getting airborne in his balloon, almost Haven. Or almost heaven, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Oh, look Gary. at that shot of the Roadrunner balloon. Oh, yeah, look at that. From our balloon camera. So yeah. they're right over there by them. You know, when we were doing test flights of that balloon, it was like we could not get a picture of the Roadrunner side. The coyote was the photo hog of that balloon. <laughs> Yesterday, we could not get a picture of the coyote side. It was oh, really? the Roadrunner stepping forward. It's kind of amazing how that happens. They did not put turning vents in that balloon because the original didn't, didn't have, have them. Didn't have them, okay. So they tried to do that. So it's kind of like they can't Yeah, it's see. not on demand anyway. Right, right. Somebody was asking on the Facebook feed, any idea how many people are there? Lots. Lots and lots and lots. No, I have no clue how many people are there. But this is probably, this is one of the largest crowds I've seen in the past many years here, without question. And large crowd days in the past have been on the 80,000, 88,000 range yeah. per yeah. day. So, so I, this I was is definitely, um, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised that we're, you know, we're knocking a hundred thousand on the on the door somewhere. Someone caught me on a TV interview the other day and asked how many uh, people we expected this year, and before I even thought about it, the number one million came out of my mouth, and I went, "Ooh, where do I get off uh, making <laughs> up numbers like that?" <laughs> but we typically get over the nine days. We've had 1.2 million in the past. We have, and recently we've been in the 880, 880,000, right. 900,000 range. So just looking at today's crowd, if this carries through, and because of the significance be of the 50th, you would yeah. expect there will be more here this year. So I would not. I certainly would say that one million is in the ballpark. I would think so. Yeah, for the nine-day attendance. Speaking of uh, balloons, as we were earlier talking about the radio control balloons, the RC balloons, there is your Fiesta defending champion, Zarek Wells, in the balloon Guilty, the yellow balloon with the beautiful handlebar mustache right on the side. He's out over the western edge of the balloon field. And Zarek he will be carrying banner number one he will. as the defending champion. And, he is, uh, and the defending champions also have special basket banners. Uh, in addition to the original 13, all of the uh, previous champions, all the previous yeah. champions have a, a unique basket banner. Zarek also uh, just back from Slovenia, where he was part of uh, Team USA uh, in the World Championships. Rhett Hartzell, by the way, we were talking about earlier, was the only American to make it into the top 10. But we had, I think, uh, we had, I think, what, I think it was five in the top 25 pilots 
I think that's correct. I should look at my notes from the BFA meeting on Thursday. Look at this sky. Just what a rainbow that is leading up. Wow. Over to the west. Just a, what an amazing, amazing day. It's only been 350 some days since we've seen this, but yep. boy, I have missed it. And you never tire of seeing it. No, not at all. Here goes the Union Jack. G-U-K-U-K. -U -K. I see Ralph Kaiser's EOS balloon, the big white vertical separated by the, the reds and the pinks. Basil Book behind him. There's a new special shape for us. Let me uh, double check. Oh, this. yeah. Yeah. That is um, Mandrill. Worley Macedo from. Uh, Looks a little bit oh. almost like a, 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 char a character from um, Lion King. Just a bit. And I there's, the, the uh, there's one of the fox balloons behind it. And then off the there's right, that's the big hug. The big hug with the bear and the. Uh, there goes Mandrill in the yeah, air. There goes Mandrill. The bear and the elephants hugging each other. There goes Seasons over toward the center of the stage. There comes Mandrill now. If you're out, if you're here looking out at the field, look straight down the field from the south to the north. There's a good look at Mandrill. Smoky Bear is up right now. You said Beth Wright Smith flying that balloon this year? Yes. Seasons in the air. We can see the purple balloon with the uh, snowman, but if you look around the balloon, you'll see the pumpkin, uh, s the, the sun, and um, snowman. What's the fourth one? There's all four, it represents all four seasons. There's the sun, there's the snowman, that's summer, winter, the pumpkin is fall. So what is spring? Is, the, is, it, is it the daisy? Is that I what it's it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah the it would be the, it's the daisy, yeah. that's right. Yep. Okay. yep, I do remember that. I still love the shot from the air of all the balloons. That mandrel up is, there. that's a pretty awesome looking balloon. Isn't it? Since I have my high pollutant camera here with me, I might. And it's got a battery in it now? And it has a battery in it now, yep. Might, although just as I do that, he's now turning toward the. Uh, do you realize we're still in the first wave? I yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a good shot of Smokey. And that looks like. Could make. Oh, yeah, it's going to be. Well, maybe not. Let me check. See if she's in. Uh, yeah. Right next to Smokey, the blue at the top and the bottom with the yellow in the middle and the red. That is vacation. Janet Sopera wanted me to start playing the vaca some vacation song that I've never heard of, but I guess it's a popular song. She wanted me to play that every time she launches, and I had to decline. Uh, there is uh, Belzebeth. That is Sydney uh, Severn out of, uh, from uh, Villers de Ville, Belarus. That is kind of the black devilish looking thing there. The, the black horns, the white eyes. Belzebeth is the name of that balloon. There you can see why we like to fly out to the west. The houses yeah. are get a little more sparse out yeah, there. Few and far between. Yeah. Lots of wide open landing sites. There is, um, now I don't know if that's uh, Mike Ballins or Betty who's flying the balloon. The one with the musical staff around it and the piano keyboard around the bottom of the balloon. You yep. See that one? And we discovered last year the music around the balloon. You know what song that is? Do you remember? Uh, was it Yesterday? Yesterday by Paul McCartney. And the Beatles. There it is coming right into view on the right side of our screen. Yeah, there he goes. That uh, orange and blue spiral balloon on the screen right now and just in front of us is the first spiral patterned balloon ever built by Aerostar Balloons, as a matter of fact. That was uh, Twisted Gator. There's the Arkansas balloon, a natural state of Arkansas. Some years ago, I did an article for Ballooning, uh, Balloon Life magazine uh, called that we titled Ships of State. And it was all about the, the many balloons that are 
many state balloons that are out there. There's not that many left anymore, but Arkansas still has one. Another new special shape just on the screen there, the new alien balloon. Yep, this is, uh, I forget his full title, but something about benevolent leader and um, coming all the way from the UK. Lee Hooper. Yep. And yeah. he tells us, for here, we're just calling it alien. Yeah, well, they kind of, they, they named it alien. Um, but when he, whenever he's on their social media pages, they have this whole long, you know, the yeah, yeah. His Holiness Benevolent Leader, God of all creation, yada, 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 <laughs> yada, sort of stuff. We just call him the alien. Beth has got Smokey in the air. And there goes Big Hug as well. The alien is a lot of fun. You know how around uh, Yoda and Darth Vader, when they're here, they have the stormtroopers all in their costumes? Yes. Well, the alien, Lee Hooper, has a whole crowd. Good morning, Lee. He has a whole crowd of people that have, they're like inflatable suits that they oh. get into. And they run, <laughs> and they're, they're a whole little army of little aliens. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. They're having a lot of fun with that balloon. That's great. So we also have a spaceship balloon here this year. Is that the flying saucer the that flying I saw saucer. in Plano? Yeah. 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 And it's got the little aliens in the, in the, in windows. the windows, the kind of a <laughs> cockpit, if you will. Yeah. We're expecting to see that one this week as well. Maybe just for the uh, shape days. I have to go check for sure. So now is that's, this? That's the flying bus. Oh, yeah. The VW, <laughs> VW almost, bus. Almost looks like a VW on. I don't think it is, but it's a, that's the flying bus we've uh, seen in the center probably there. Probably what it's meant to be, or, or yeah, an homage to the flying, to a uh, Volkswagen bus. I see Pencil Boy sticking up above the crowd. Launching above the crowd. I guess that's why he's well. sticking up above the crowd is that's because he's why. launching. He's launching. Rising above. Imagine that. Oh, this, yeah. <laughs> Just never get tired of this. Can't say that enough, I guess. And the shots from the balloon cam with the sun over the Sandias. We see the ground. We see the balloons. Everybody, everybody headed out that way. Yeah, it's just a, uh, hi, Jackie. The balloon on the right, the uh, racer shape there, the blue and white check with the words freedom. That's uh -huh. a new balloon here in Albuquerque. Well, I saw it flying. Uh, let's see, I got into town on Wednesday, so it was Thursday morning. I was going to meet some friends at the Flying Star for breakfast, and it was up flying, and it made me think uh, again, you know, okay, those of you playing Glenmore, your bingo, get ready. Um, uh, made me think of Scotland because obviously the famous line by um, Oh, senior moment. Um, I can't help you with that one. I know. Um, While you're thinking <laughs> of it, it's Colin McClung. That's ter oh, that's and God, that's embarrassing. Pretty new, uh, pretty new pilot, um, and it's his first time here at Balloon Fiesta. There's the top of Bill Walker's balloon, the smiley face in the yellow. built into that parachute top that we mentioned probably close to an hour ago when we were showing some of those to you. More and more balloons are starting uh, to do something in that top, whether it's smiley faces or we saw Zia's like in the Zia balloon, the Sid Cutter silhouette in the Fiesta 50 balloon. And I have to tell you, um, when you put something like a smiley face there that way, that it's, um, it really helps when you're out on the crown line to yeah. see if the balloon is rotated correctly That's or not. That's true, yeah. And so um, one of the balloons that I fly has a smiley face in it, and the other one, it's the colors match perfectly going around. Yeah. So it's really nice on the smiley face ones to know whether we're rotated around in the cold inflation. Yeah, especially part. on one like this where the, the whole top is yellow. Yeah. It's hard to tell. You wouldn't be able to if tell if it was, you know, If every panel is like red, white, blue, red, white, blue, red, white. But when they're all the same color, it does make it more difficult. There on the feed is Simbaloo. Uh, that is, uh, and right next to it is uh, probably, I think that's the koala bear. That's part Looks of like uh, Andrew Holly and the Longleat um, 
fleet that are here from the UK, from Sky Safari. There is our spaceship that, that we were, were just about, talking about. Yeah, our flying saucer, the new Dos Equis balloon. Not always the most interesting balloon, but when it flies, it is. And uh, that is Sean Askren flying Dos Equis. I thought Scott was flying it. No, I, I was told Sean was flying it because, um, for Scotty, but. Okay. Well, and the only reason I know that was because Sean is, had a vacation home in Florida that was wiped out by the hurricane, and uh, he wanted to go and check on his property, and I was told he couldn't get away from Balloon Fiesta because he was contracted to fly the new Dos Equis balloon. Now, okay. that's the information I had third hand. If that's incorrect, I apologize, but that's well, what I was Scott, told. Scotty has all these pilots working for him, exactly. and, and he can interchange them. Right. So uh, originally, Scott Appleman was supposed to fly Dos Equis, and Sean was going to fly a Rainbow Riders balloon. Oh, okay. So somebody's flying it for Scott. Well, yeah, <laughs> one way or the other. I, that, as I say, the story I was told was I that. I understand. Was that, you know, at any rate, Sean could not get away to go to Florida because Scott right. couldn't find another pilot to put in whichever balloon it was yeah. that he was flying. Yep. Yeah. Our gnome is out there as well. A gnome. <laughs> <laughs> That too is, well, that used to be one of Andrew Hawley's balloons. I think it was sold. And there's Little Dog popping up on the right-hand side of the screen. <laughs> Sorry about that squeaky noise. I keep trying to sip my, sip my hot chocolate with my microphone in place, and the cup squeaks against the foam on the, the windscreen on the mic. Apologies. Little Dog being flown by Vladimir Braveria. Well, and where did... Um, I saw Dean Carlton got up in the air. He's, ar he's already he's gone already over. Gosh, that was fast. Yep, he already got past us. I saw him just a moment okay. ago. As you were squeaking, <laughs> the dog was, <laughs> Wags was flying by. Yeah, Wags, the puppy dog balloon. Looks like Tim Ballou just taking off over the top of the spaceship out there. So we're starting to get the... There's Adelaide the koala. The second wave inflated here. It'll be a little bit smaller than the first wave, but it's been slow this morning too, hasn't it? Doesn't it? I mean, it's been very. Re I think it's relaxed. Would be a better relaxed. Yeah. yeah, better choice. We're, uh, we're an hour into the launch. Is that all? Yep. So an hour through the first wave. Yeah. Okay. So well, we're uh, that's we're about kinda, average yep, then. We're right on time. Okay. Just seems like. This is a nice shot of the top. You can actually see the aliens looking through the windows in that spaceship. Oh yeah. Little green men from Mars. Or somewhere out there. Or, yeah. The back end of Little Dog. The bum, as they would say. Same for uh, Simbaloo, turned around backwards so he can read Long Lake Sky Safari, which was the event where I was just at uh, just barely two weeks ago now. There's the I'm looking up way high, and we talked about low, you go south, you go up a few hundred feet, and you be, are able to turn around and go to the northwest. But if you go even higher than that, maybe 1,500, 2,000 feet, you actually come back east. So you could conceivably get all the way back here to the field. Now, they can't land back here until everybody's launched. Not now, but later in the morning, maybe. Yeah, after we get everybody launched, there would be the possibility of landing back here. I think everyone... Um, the majority of them, I only see a handful that have gone up high enough to come back east to maybe come back this way. Yeah. I think most of them are heading out to the... And look how slow it is up there. Yeah, the target rich and... Well, I saw one of the earlier reports this morning where uh, up at altitude it was like 1.5 miles oh, per yeah. hour. And you're like, oh... Really whipping along. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could get out and push and move faster <laughs> than this. Yeah. Oh, what a great, what a great morning. Yeah, just awesome. Just I awesome. spot the wonder balloon. Spot the wonder. There it is. Oh, yeah, there he is. I can see it. Not even looking at the monitor. I can just see it looking down at the field. Yeah. There goes Gnome. Yep. G'day, Gnome. 
I always thought that looked like a, a big ice cream cone with strawberry ice cream myself until I, somebody I said, oh, no, it's a gnome. Oh, well, especially from this side where yeah. you don't see any of the face. I mean, it, it, yeah. it looks like a very messy Dairy Queen ice cream cone. <laughs> yeah, because they always had that little twirl on top. They do. Uh, yeah. I, w I once worked at a Dairy Queen. It's the only reason I know about that. But see, uh, there, are, there you can see the front. So you can actually see the face. So but it doesn't look so much like an ice cream. Well, but cone. then he looks like a, a, a Santa Claus in ice cream, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a strawberry Santa Claus. <laughs> I, I never understood it as a gnome. You know, <laughs> it, it needs more colors than just pink. Or maybe the bottom shouldn't be cone colored. Shouldn't be cone colored, yeah. That, th there's always that option, too. As we get started on the second wave, we'll go through the field again. A few less balloons in the second wave here. You can tell there's less balloons because either that or it's getting a little windier down on the ground because I can feel a little more breeze up here now than we could earlier this morning. There's the uh, top of the shari, the black and white one there. Yep. The balloon from Gala, Peter Procopio. The Freedom Balloon? Yes. William Wallace, the character that was played by, who's his name, who's his face in Braveheart? Okay. A, a, a very famous Scottish uh, warrior, Scottish king. Um, but uh, in the end of the movie, his the shout was always, Freedom! Okay. You know, and so that's what made me think about that. Henry goes, Rosenbaum is the back. Bus. Yeah, Henry Rosenbaum is back as our balloon meister this year. Good morning, Henry. Good morning, Art. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning, Henry. Good morning to everybody that's out there watching. Yeah. Lots of people out there. Lots of people on the field this morning. There are a ton of people out here. And we are so excited. I've said it before. This is a Chamber of Commerce day. It is. I mean, it it's just beautiful. Is. We couldn't have asked for any better weather. No. Yeah, and this, this perfect opportunity here for the balloons. Just go south, go up, and just... They're all just hanging out there very slow out to the northwest. We're actually seeing some folks high coming back to the east. Yep. Yeah, we've been in communication with a couple of the pilots. They had a great launch. Um, launch directors, everybody did a great job, but they're trying to do that box. They're trying to box back in, but it's just not enough to eat. But uh, they're heading out to the northwest, and they're having a great flight and enjoying the countryside of Albuquerque. That is great. So, Henry, what uh, what special things do you have on tap for this for this year, being it's the 50th? Well, just being back and being part of it every year is what's special. But this year is uh, one of the things we're doing at each of our morning briefings is inviting some of the past balloon meisters. Well, we invited all of them, but some of the balloon meisters that can actually come and attend the event, we're actually bringing them up onto the uh, podium there, the platform and uh, introducing them to the pilots that are here today and letting them say a couple words and just letting them know that we truly appreciate what they did many, many years ago that's allowing us to do what we do today. And today we had uh, Mark Wilson, who was the Blue Meister in 1979. And I think uh, Ruth did Ruth an interview got a with him earlier. To to him, right. yeah. He's a fantastic guy. He still lives here locally, but he has not been back to the Fiesta for a morning launch in many, many years, and he was just at awe. That's what he was telling Ruth. It was it was really great to, to yeah. see that. What's the what's the mood of the pilots over there at Pilots Briefing for this 50th? Celebration. They're here to celebrate. They want to show their craft. They want to interact with the folks. And they're, what's so unique about this year is there are many people here that have come back from the ballooning community to be a part of it, whether they're flying or just to be here and be spectators and crew. Mm. But we're running into folks that we haven't seen for years. So it's making that connection again. And after a couple minutes of conversation, it's like yesterday. And then the other great thing about an event like this with so many people is meeting the people today that are going to be my friends tomorrow and for years to come. Well, and you have to wonder how many people are here this year. You know, for so many of us, us old timers, you know, the 50th is a, is a big thing. For some people, this is their first fiesta. Yes. What will... 50 years from now be like for them. I know, it, it's amazing. So when I look back in 1996, our 25th anniversary right. then, that was my first year flying as a pilot. 
and look 25 years later what I'm able to do and achieve. And with the team that's here helping everybody out. Uh, so that's the message is that if you're the first time pilot here, there's potential in 25 years you could be the balloon meister. <laughs> so yeah. It, yeah, don't, don't ever think that you can't shoot too high. So, But uh, enjoy the day. Enjoy the week. It's going to be fantastic. I do have a gift for each of you. Well, great. And, oh, and this you. really, it's a, and I'm a, let me hand it to Glenn. I want to explain there's one for you and one for Art. You know, ballooning is about friends. And yes, it is. And we can't do it without our friends. And on that, and hopefully you can show it later to the uh, viewers out there, there's a, three balloons on that. My balloon is on there in the center. Yep. But the two balloons beside me are my dear friends, Sam Parks and Ken Drawn. Ken Drawn. And that's yeah. what it's about. Yeah. It's, it's sharing this with the friends that we've made from years past, the friends we're making today, and, and uh, looking forward to tomorrow. That's an amazing pin, and, and I'm proud to say those two guys are very good friends of mine as well. I've had the privilege of flying, having Ken Drawn fly with me in my balloon uh, some years ago. I've never flown with Sam, but we've always been great close friends, have immense respect for what he does and what he's brought to this event and the organization and operation. Yeah, it, it really is amazing. We're so happy that Sam is at the level he's at now, serving as the director of operations. Uh, and what he's brought to Fiesta and the professionalism and uh, the other aspects of not just the balloons, but what the spectator experience is. Yes. And uh, just bringing it all together and putting on a world-class event. So That's what this is without question. Yeah. The other thing I just saw leave with this is on the bottom of the pen to the right there is the silhouette of Sid, uh, Sid Cutter. And we know what Sid Cutter, the Cutter family, and all of the other pilots that were part of the initial flight back in April of 1972. So we wanted to um, cause recognition or uh, show out recognition to Sid and uh, his family and just say thank you to everybody that came before us that has put in place what we're able to enjoy today. Well, and the other family that deserves mention is that of Tom Rutherford, who was there with Sid in the beginning at uh, Coronado Center. And you talked about, you know, aim high. I can remember coming here in the late 80s when I had just started announcing a few balloon rallies around Texas, and, and I thought, wow, I would love to do Albuquerque, but that was like beyond my wildest dreams, and Ron Berman took me behind the scenes, introduced me to Marge Ruppenthal, who was the chairman of the event at that time, and a year later, I got the phone call saying, you know, are you still interested in coming out and being one of our announcers? And I was privileged enough to join and work with Tom for 25 years. He was the original voice of this event, and, you know, and 33 years later, here I am doing this now with this brilliant gentleman sitting beside me and from just talking on a microphone over a PA system to the crowd to now live streaming to viewers all around the world. I, I couldn't have imagined that in 1990 when I came up here for the first yeah. time. No, you're, you're right. Um, aim high and keep aiming. Yeah. And when you reach that level, go to the next That's level. That's right. So Never stop. Always I reach for the stars. I'll do another interview. I'm going to tell you about a pin that uh, made a connection with somebody over in Italy one day. I'll save that for another day. But I wanted to stop by, say hello, thank you and your team for what you are doing to broadcast this out to the world. And I literally mean that. It is going to the world, it as is. you know. And uh, there are people that are waking up at 1 o'clock in the morning to tune in to see it live. So they are. thank you again. Thank and, you, Henry. Um, we're looking for a great week all week long. We're looking forward to it. We'll talk more to you. And maybe we'll get out to pilot's briefing and see one of those honorary balloon meisters one morning. Yeah, please do that. Look forward to you. All right. Super. Thanks, Henry. Yep. Thanks, Thanks, Henry. Henry Thanks Rosenbaum. for coming up. Henry Rosenbaum, the balloon meister again this year here at the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, kind of bringing us uh, up to speed on what's going on. Our balloon camera and those that took off at 7 o'clock this morning still flying out there. We just saw a shot from uh, our balloon cam of the truly balloon, Bill Lee. Oh, yeah? So, uh, yeah, so <laughs> they're, they're, it's, it's a great morning. They're getting great flights in this morning. Henry said they've already heard back from a number of them that uh, it's talked about some great launches this morning. And, yeah, what a sight. Yeah, uh, I mean, and it, the sky, it hasn't changed for hours. The, number, the balloons have changed, but the image is still the same because yeah. we just keep replenishing the balloons, keep That's refilling it. and refilling. It, yeah, it's just kind of extending to the north yeah. and the northwest. Yeah. The picture's getting bigger. You need a wider lens. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Take a, look, uh, take a look at Victor here. He's trying to get some oh, pictures. Oh, hi, Victor. <laughs> Good morning. It's just an incredible morning. It is. And the, and the, and what 
even the weather is cooperating. I mean, it's a, we talked earlier when we first started this morning about, about how unseasonably warm it is. It's so comfortable up here on the rooftop this morning. You know, there have been years past where you and I have both been up here, you know, <laughs> icicles. Yeah. You know, everything but our, our back teeth are chattering. And, um, you know, this year it's just so relaxed. And maybe that's why I said earlier it seems slow. It just seems, it seems just more nice. relaxed. Just nice. It's just enjoyable. Yeah. Here goes the cats right in front of us. And who's that? Oh, that's the new witch um, we're seeing on the screen. Yeah, oh, it's right overhead. Look straight up. It's just yeah. crossing right over the hey, top look of who's us. Yeah, Mandrel's managed Mandrel's to box back, Yeah, too. but he didn't go out to the west. He no, stayed he stayed over, over, over here east. to yeah. the east. He kind of boxed around and the east side. And was able to box around. Yeah. The Crown, Plaza, Crown Plaza has their balloon here. The uh, Cosmic Crisp Apple balloon is here. Uh, that will be Steve Wilkinson, I believe, flying that balloon. Yep, that is the Cosmic Crisp is a, fa a fairly new uh, variety of apple that was developed by um, some university researchers out west. I've not had one yet, but I'm told they're quite a delicious apple. My wife, Bobby, has uh, had those. She loves them. Jeff Ashworth coming right over well, us. Well, see, is I that was who trying, yeah, it's no reports found. Okay. It didn't, it didn't accept the word tartan because that's the New Mexico State tartan balloon. Right. Slanja and uh, Jeff Ashworth. So I, I, see, I searched tartan and nothing came up. Well, that would be the only one. So <laughs> to put a search term in for one word would hey. not be. You know, it's, it's searchable. Come on. Yeah. It's supposed to be a database. It's searchable. Yeah. Get with the it already searches on too many fields, I think. But there goes uh, Soler. And right in front of us here. We come right over the top. Crown Plaza yeah. has their balloon just about looking across just to our left, right over the top of the Exxon Mobile tent. The 50th Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta is, of course, powered by Exxon Mobile, as is Balloon Fiesta Live. That balloon is uh, traveling light. Max Mitchell flying it. There's Cosmic Crisp right next to uh, Kashari. Yeah. Coming over the top, another, it's a new balloon here in Albuquerque. It's the pink and black vertical stripes with the pink pennant. Oh, okay. We don't have it on the feed. That's Karen Converse. And Cosmic Crips goes overhead. And that would be, once again, that's Steve and Cynthia Wilkinson flying Cosmic Crisp. So the cow has deflated and they've put up the little Moo Crew cream line balloon. Oh, yeah, a little round balloon. Okay. And that's uh, one of our new shapes. A couple of new Just shapes the, yeah. back there, too, yeah. I still see the flying saucer way back there in the background. Yep. I don't think they've ever launched. There's Steggy. Steggy, yeah. And I, that's a, I guess that's a balloon version of a Stegosaurus. Yeah. That's the name Steggy. See, I'm more than just a hot air voice. There you go. <laughs> I have and some I don't skills. Have, I don't have it in my brain what that other little guy is. Hey, somebody's watching from Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, home of the groundhog. Oh, there you go. I saw China on Marcia the feed Sherman. earlier, too. You know, I, neither one of us have paid as much attention to the feed we as have we have it. in the past, but I, I've seen a lot of folks from Texas. I've seen uh, Colorado. Somebody checked in from Chicago earlier today. Um, I've just been so wrapped up with what's going on on the field that I really haven't paid a lot of attention. Yeah, just trying to keep up with, uh, yeah, and got to get back in the swing. Yeah, of Yeah, it's kind of come, you know, you got to get back in the saddle and, and ride, and so some of that's getting used to. So that one I was looking at before, before is Mr. Globy. There's the back of Lady Jester. Yeah. Jester. See, you read that as Mr. Globy correctly. <laughs> I read it as Mr. Gobble, and I went, <laughs> "What the heck is Mr. Gobble?" <laughs> That is an advantage of actually 
seeing some of these. And, and actually this year I worked with uh, Jennifer Garcia, who's our associate event director and pilot coordinator in charge of right. all that. So I wrote the database that's on the back end, accepting all of the pilot applications yeah, and so seeing see all their pictures. So I do have it. You get to see all this in advance, and I, I, do. I don't. I, I do. get it when I get to town. I do. Um, so, yeah, it's, and, and you work on your app all year round. I get it the night before, and I'm supposed to figure out how it works. Of course, the fact that we've been using it for five or six years now <laughs> is... <laughs> Never mind. Never mind, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I could do some homework, but then again... Maybe not. There is something Somebody called from sleep, too. Yeah, that, too. Somebody from South Carolina looking for Tom Mullinax. Yeah, I haven't seen Tom yet, either, but um, Tom's a good friend of mine. Good morning from uh, Hi Trevor. Oh, that was Jill saying hello. Now we have our own private message service going on on the feed, people talking <laughs> to each other. That's been going on on the YouTube feed all morning. Yeah, they're, they're not talking to us. They're yeah. talking to each other. Well, that's because okay. we haven't talked back to them. Well, that's so true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's true. Mr. Gobble is Mr. Globy's evil clone. Oh. <laughs> well done, well done. Somebody's awake this morning and got a sense of humor. Yeah. So the little round Creamland balloon now in the air as well. See all the magic up. Pam Lombardo watching from Austin, Texas, the live music capital right out of the Austin city limits. Good morning, Pam. actually hear a little bit of the wind in our mics now. Yeah, a little, little bit noise. of breeze coming up yeah. here. Getting a bit breezier as the morning goes on. Look at this. Uh, what's this balloon off to the right here with the dragonflies on it? You know, Bobby and I, your wife and I, were talking about dragonflies just this morning. Yeah. See the blue one over the, right over the stage. I do. I see it. I started looking earlier and I got distracted. Okay. So, and let's see. There goes the RPS balloon and the PNC bank balloon. Team RNS. They were RNS Motorsports, RNS Kawasaki, RNS Motorcycle. There have been so many RNSs, I've lost track of which is what. Yeah. It's all the same folks, just different. They just keep changing the name. Different iterations yep. of the name. You know, in my defense on my database here, too, pilots keep changing balloons. Yep. And sometimes they send a new picture, and sometimes, sometimes they, they don't. don't. Yep. And there goes the Kashari. If you think about that, um, we probably process more than 10,000 documents between oh, pilot certificates and all those other types of things. Yeah. Anyway, that is called Dragonfly, by the way. Oh, okay. From, uh, yeah, Jean-Mi Francois. Yeah. Oh, nice balloon, anyway. I yeah. like it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's been here a few times, I remember. Like Loretta Zamora going right over us. I don't usually, Loretta's on the, yeah. a local pilot here on the Quad A Education Committee. So uh, she always flies here. I uh, rarely see her in the sky, so have to shout out to Loretta. So Denver, Glen Allen, Virginia saying hello. Um, Gray, Tennessee. Okay. Findlay, Ohio. Karen Green. Good morning, Karen. Trying to catch up with some of the folks that are checking in on the feed, letting us know where they're watching from. So I just saw a smiley go over the our right side, over the south end of the field, Nick Donner. And there's one, some of our uh, Main Street entertainers. Oh, yeah. So there's more than just balloons here. That's We've got right. an entire Main Street with roving performers on Main Street. We've got a Main Street stage, which after the balloons fly, we'll have entertainment on it. Somewhere on the order of 70 or 80 vendors down Concession Row. About half of them are food. Pretty much anything you could want over there. And of course, the official merchandise tents. There's one a little bit north of midfield and one at the south end of the field. I have to tell you, if you are planning on getting 50th branded merchandise, you should get that today. Do not wait on your 50th yeah. branded 
mer official merchandise. There's not going to be any clearance sale, folks. Let's just you know I, get I that right out so. of the way. Uh, or we, fire sales or any of that stuff. With all the COVID stuff, we've really ramped up our online store. Yeah. And in the last year, our online sales have really taken off. And when we started introducing the 50th merchandise, it just ramped up even more. And yeah, so the stuff, uh, even though we tried to buy more and try and have enough, remember it's dated, it's only for the 50th, so it's not something that we can continue to restock, right? So um, yeah, if you're looking at uh, 50th branded stuff, you need to get to the official merchandise tent um, soon. There's the Wyoming balloon. If I spelled Wyoming right, I could tell you who was actually flying it. Uh, Bruce Pivak from guess where? Wyoming. So we're working our way through the second wave maybe a half to two thirds of the way through the second wave. We're seeing a little bit more breeze right here on the surface. So we see a little more rocking and rolling of some balloons as they stand up. And that's because as the balloon hits the fabric, it starts moving the fabric around because the basket's still connected to the ground. Once the basket gets off the ground, the balloon gets up to the speed of the wind, then in the balloon you feel no sense of wind. You still have the sense of motion. So our balloon cam balloon has landed and the chase crew has just arrived. That's the other thing. People always say, okay, so when do the balloons come back and how do they get back here if they just fly away? So the balloons fly off. Today, they went south and up high. They're going back to the northwest, find a landing site out there, probably in Rio Rancho Corrales area, where there's more room to land. And the chase vehicles will now leave and literally chase those balloons and attempt to be there um, when the balloon lands or shortly after, if not before. And then they'll uh, deflate the balloon, pack it all back up come back to the field and refuel it so that it is ready for either tonight's glow. Good morning, Kendron. We talked about his balloon being on Henry Rosenbaum's pin, flying right over the top of us. Racer shaped yellow with the diamond patterns on it. So the crews will pack up the balloon, put it back on the truck, come back, refuel it, get it ready for the next flight, whether that's the glow tonight or whether that is tomorrow morning's flight. With 650 balloons here, we usually glow a little less than 300. There's another uh, shot of uh, some special shapes out there. The tall green and black one is actually, that's the handle of a screwdriver. When that stands up, you'll be able to see the blade of the screwdriver. It looks like the Swiss Chalet right next to it. And off on the left, you still see the alien spaceship or the flying saucer. And there's Buster. Buster the Bulldog, Paul Burroughs from Bristol. And look at that shot of all the balloons in the sky, except that that's not all of them. <laughs> that's yeah. just a small representation of what is actually in the sky. So we're getting ready to deflate the Fiesta balloon that carried our balloon Fiesta camera live this morning. So Ray Bear, our pilot, graciously doing that. So he is now pulling the top which is that opening at the top of the balloon. He's got a, a red line connected to it, a rope connected to it. He's gonna pull that down, let the hot air come out. The balloon is just gonna lay right over on the ground. The basket just tips over. And Ray kind of steps out of the basket. The crew kind of starts grabbing the lines and start helping bring that down. Someone out on the crown line 
trying to working to pull the top so that it doesn't just collapse right back down on top of the crew and the pilot and the burners. And as the crew starts to close off the throat there that so no more air goes in, and then they'll start to melt it. See how they're kind of pushing it together and squeezing that? That'll squeeze the hot air out the top. And so we'll get to see the deflation side of that if you're watching on the screen. For those of you here on the field, you can see it on the video walls if you happen to be near our Main Street stage. Of course, those of you uh, here, you still got balloons. And actually, there does go the screwdriver out there on the far north side of the field as we continue to watch them pack up the Spirit of Fiesta balloon. So they're deflating the, or deploying, inflating the blade of the screwdriver balloon. You can just see that in the top there. The big handle is really the balloon itself, and the blade is being deployed below them. I wonder if that fills up with, do they help fill it up, or does it just you kind know, of, I'm, I'm wondering how that works. Know. I'm wondering how that works. Oh, one of our other special shapes is up out there, too. You wonder if they have a separate fan. That's what <coughs> I, yeah, Excuse I kind of wondered that. Yeah, to inflate. Because it's kind of, I mean, it seems like it is filling up with air of some sort. So, and all the pictures we've seen, it's pretty solid, so. Yeah, but, it, and yeah, you're right now, it seems like it's getting fuller, fuller as it's flying closer to us. So, like, maybe there's a, a fan in the, in the basket. I don't know. I don't know. I know one thing. It's time for sunglasses. <laughs> you know, I've got new eyes this year. Yeah. I had uh, cataract surgery done on both my eyes uh, back in the summer, so I no longer wear glasses, which means I no longer have to have prescription sunglasses. I can buy them off the shelf now. Well, what which a means deal. I can buy cool sunglasses again. Oh, there you go. So oh, yeah, look at those. Yeah, aren't those cool? We just saw Alfred the Carpenter on the video screen, another new special shape here. Steggy hey. has still not launched. I see him still sitting out there. Yeah, as is Mr. Globy. Mr. Gobble. <laughs> there goes the Swiss Chalet out there, though, you know, of our special shape. Okay, now what is this directly overhead of us? Says Holmes work? On That's the back? Alfred. That's is that Alfred? Alfred? That's okay. Alfred the Carpenter. When okay, he turns so around, we're looking at the back yeah. side of Alfred. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's his fanny pack you're reading, Hell's Work. Now, oh, oh, that's another new one, isn't it? What's that new little thing? The one, that's the Swiss Chalet. Oh, yep. okay. There it, was, it is right I there. I guess yeah. if I paid attention, it might help, you think? <laughs> <laughs> and that's from Sweden, obviously. Well, you would hope Ro so. <laughs> Roman Mueller, and it's Roman's first time here at Balloon Fiesta. Oh, cool. Well, see, I was just saying to Her uh, Henry that... Uh, there are some people here that this is their first fiesta, even though it's our 50th, or, or is the 50th, not my 50th. So LC is checking in. He says he's from Albuquerque, but he's watching from Houston. All right. Good deal. Annie Smathers says, think it might be time for a nap. Annie, you're not far off. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, it, it was, a, I don't know how you did last night. We were talking when we left the museum last night about having to speed nap overnight. You know, I was lights out at 9.15 last night. I was not far behind you. And the alarm was set for 3 a.m. Ditto. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And a full day. Saturdays always seem to be an especially busy day here at Balloon Fiesta. Well, the whole opening weekend, for, for me especially, because today obviously is a very full day. Tomorrow we have again the mass ascension tomorrow morning and then midday we have the, the Balloon Federation of America has its annual general membership meeting right. at 11 o'clock over in the uh, Sid Cutter Pavilion. So I have to do that. That usually gets me back to the hotel about two and then I turn around at three o'clock and head back out here for the afternoon session. Uh, so that Sunday, uh, opening Sunday is always my longest day. 
Um, but yeah, this is a busy day. And I think part of it is just because of the adrenaline of the excitement and everything going on, getting yep. started again. Yep. Well, of course, on this first Saturday, today, we are also have the America's Challenge gas That's race true. scheduled right. as well. Tonight. So it's not just the morning flight like we're um, coming towards the end of a little bit here this morning and then the glow tonight, but we also now have America's Challenge. There is a briefing for the pilots at noon today where well, there will be some sort of uh, um, official determination of when they plan to make the launch happen. Someone has sent off a little... Um, pie ball thing oh, over yeah. here. Which <laughs> With a little basket a little underneath basket, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they have permission to be in our uh, restricted area here. Um, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, the, the last I heard was, um, you know, they were looking for launch tonight uh, in part because there's some weather coming in from the west. They're going to try and get out ahead of it. They're going to try and get out ahead of it. So if things go according to the predicted published schedule, yep. then they would be able to start their inflation process somewhere mid-afternoon, 2, 3 o'clock, something like that. doesn't take nearly as long as it used to with the old netted balloons. Because now we have the quick, quick fill fills. process. Yeah. Uh, but the idea would be to start the launch at about 6 o'clock, which is also the, con the time when our glow is kind of the launch of that or the setup of that kind of starts. Right. So the glow starts more like at 6.30. So tonight... Five o'clock, Fast Track's going to jump in. My understanding is they've stepped up their game on their flag jump. Oh, boy. So That'll looking, be fun. Looking forward. Of course, they always brought in, you know, 5,000 square feet of freedom. That's right. Yeah. No, that's, no. It's no? Kinda, yeah. Okay. They tell me we're going to see more than that. And so that happens at 5. That will happen here live on the field. We'll record that and play it back for our folks on the stream, although the folks here in the field, we'll they have it. to watch it live at right. 5, um, et cetera. So we'll be uh, basically on the air here at 6. If the gas balloons start inflating before that, we'll turn our video on earlier so that people can watch that. But unless the launch gets moved up before 6 o'clock, we'll still be live on the air at 6. Okay. And then the um, we'll hopefully get that launch of the America's Challenge out, and then we'll have our balloon glow tonight, the Twilight Twinkle Glow. At the end of the Twinkle Glow, we have Fast Tracks jumping in with their pyrotechnics. Right. Scheduled at 7.30, 7.45. We're going to bring our top secret now, so not top, top secret, secret yeah. aerial <laughs> drone show. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. We're, that'll be back at 7.45 tonight. And, and then our fabulous then afterglow, afterglow fireworks. fireworks. Man, that's gonna, that's quite a lineup tonight. It is quite a wow. lineup tonight. You betcha. Awesome. You. That's going to be fun. So it will be a, uh, a very full afternoon. And then, as you mentioned, tomorrow's the same. We don't have the America's Challenge, but we have the, the BFA meeting for those of us involved in that. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is actually a welcome party for the pilots and crews today in the middle of the day as well. Well, I think I might miss that. Yeah, um, I might too. I mean, technically, I'm not. Uh, I'm no longer a pilot or a crew. I mean, I am a pilot, but yeah, I'm not a registered balloon fiesta pilot. Understand? Is what I meant. Yeah. yeah. So, um, besides, I have a brand new bass guitar to go see at the hotel. It just came last night. I'm going to go check that out. Someone has asked on here, and I've seen it in, a, in our shots, and actually I can see it in the shot there, kind of in the center. Yeah. There is a tall white and red pylon. Oh, yeah. That is a cold inflatable. That is actually I know, I know. You know, you know, you know. <laughs> there are four of them. They are in each corner, corner of, the, of field. the field, and they are 75 feet tall. And the reason they are 75 feet tall Why is, is that, Mr. Wizard? Well, that is because... <laughs> <laughs> We got the whole stage here laughing. The 75 foot is the minimum altitude once you um, basically are uh, over the field. So p that's a way for our officials and our pilots to know how high is 75 feet. Right. It's the top of those pylons. Unless you are launching from the field or landing onto the field, you must be at 75 feet minimum. Right. Any time that you are over the field, because this is what the FAA classifies as a congested area, and it's <laughs> it certainly is that now, uh, a congested area being the gathering of people, and so for safety's sake, balloons must be a minimum of 75 feet above, and so that's a visual marker. So that as pilots, particularly, this comes into play later in the week when we get underway with our competition, where the pilots are flying into targets here at the field. They have to be at 75 feet 
until they get into the target zone, at which point then they can drop down uh, lower to drop their markers. But that is a visual that pylon helps the pilots too to know where the 75 foot mark is. If their basket, if they look, you know, and, and they're below eye level with the top of that pylon, they know they're too low, they need to get up. So that's the purpose of those markers at each of the four corners of the field. And this is a new special shape as well. It that is. We're seeing here. This uh, is we Teddy see and Lindy. Well, I was about to say, we see more of these double sided special shapes. You know, Coco the Clown, I think, was one of the originals with the, yeah, with the, the happy clown yeah. on one side, the sad clown on the other. And, and now there's all sorts of these um, dual, two faced. Is the word I'm well, there's for. kind of that big hug that we talked about right. earlier. But that's, that's two different. That's two creatures, animals, two but they animals, look yeah. because of the hug, they look different they're ways. Yeah, they're looking in opposite directions. There's the I think it's called um, carnival now. It's the three-sided um, gestures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now Teddy and Lindy. Um, I'm not sure of the significance of this. There's probably something that I'm missing. I'm sure Someone there's knows. a backstory that we don't know yet. Yeah. Probably someone online will fill us in. That's usually the way that works. <laughs> as soon as Probably. we, as soon as we profess our ignorance, somebody someone who's watching online says, "Oh, I know the answer to yeah, that," and they, you they guys, fill yeah. us in. You know, we've yeah. got a great viewing audience. There goes Sunflyer, Frank Bacon, flying the blue balloon with the yellow Zia on it. Nina Harris checking in from the city of Boston. Boston beans. How many propane tankers do you need? <laughs> Dina Lee was laughing at my joke about Mr. Wizard. I am nothing if not a comedian. Well, there you go. <laughs> St. Louis checking in, the spirit of St. Louis. Let's see, Donna Lynn Vandiver watching from Gur is all it says. My feed ran out, Gur, G-R. Maybe it'll fill out here in a moment, we'll see. Anyway, good and morning, there, Donna. And there's another uh, new shape for us. Oh, that's another clown. Another clown. Uh, I'm going to double check the word, but I think it's Olaf. Robert Gerstner checking in from Pensacola, Florida. Hope you're okay from the storm, Robert. I don't know the geography of, Pen of Florida very well. Uh, yeah, Pensacola, I think, is it's up in Florida. the panhandle. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, uh, that's where the Blue Angels are, isn't it, in Pensacola? I think so. I think. I've been to the museum there before. I should remember that. Oh, Australia. Good day, mate. Checking in from Australia. Elizabeth Checking Town, Pennsylvania. Checking in on our Australian pilots, obviously. Yeah. Somebody posting a look, what looks like German, having listened to Willie Eimers last night. Um, oh, no, that one I was talking about is just called Clown. Tom Siebel, Seibel's from... Uh, well, that's not very original. No. Nope. Gert Vierkamp checking in from Holland, which reminds me, I haven't seen, I'm sure she's checked in, Ina van der Kratz from Holland, she's a regular, another from Puxatawney, Pennsylvania, we had someone else checking in from there earlier. Someone wants to know why that green balloon has a white rope hanging from the basket. What green balloon was what right? That rope? green balloon over there with the white thing? That's oh, a screwdriver. That's a screwdriver. <laughs> and that's the blade of the screwdriver. But it did fill out eventually. Look at Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's We're going to have to check a, that out. Yeah, that's a special shape in that that's not a rope hanging from the bottom. It's fabric meant to represent the blade of a screwdriver. I'm sure there's a corporate screwdriver company name on it somewhere. It, it is. It, um, let me just call it up here. Wera, W-E-R-A. Okay. Marcus Stroth. Yes, Pensacola is home to the Blue Angels. Thank you. Uh, Robert says he just moved from Albuquerque out to Pensacola. Yeah. Well, timing is everything. At least, but the storm didn't go into Pensacola, so I'm sure he's doing well. Another <laughs> Pensacola checking in. All right. California. And the whole Blue Angels team Sacramento. is checking in this morning. All right. Someone says Xfinity looks so new and white. We must have a shot. Must have had a shot of it on the field there. We did. It is. Ago. It's a brand yeah, new brand and new it's a special shape. Did you notice that? No, I did not. It's a special shape. It's now got hearts as appendages on that white Xfinity balloon. So it now qualifies as a special shape. 
Yeah, we got fairly loose with that special shape thing. Nowadays, anything with a, a three-dimensional appendage, I yeah. think. I think Dean Carlton's wags even qualifies as a special shape because there's a little and puffy and nose. And he has a three-dimensional puffy nose on the puppy, and that's all there is that's special shape about it. I, I'm not dissing Dean's balloon. Dean's no, a very no, dear understand. friend, and it's a cute, cute balloon. It is. But you know, special shape used to mean that if it was a puppy balloon, it would look like a little puppy dog instead of just the face of a puppy on the side of a balloon. I just but saw uh, Blair Kaufman's brand new balloon, Heart's Desire, on the screen carrying the CNM banner kind of uh, purple, et cetera, and it looks like we've got some penguins inflating out there on the field now. That would be, yeah, that would be uh, um, Andrew Holly's group, and that will be um, Splash and Puddles and Tall Steve. I like the way somebody just, let me, let me get back to this. There was a comment here from someone, if I can scroll back and find it real quickly. We'll move, move past this. But someone was saying thanks for the front row seat they were watching from St. Louis. And I thought that was kind of a cool way to put what we do here. We you do bet. give you. There it is, yeah. Thank Kim, you. Kim Loomis says, nice job, guys. Thanks for the front row seat while in St. Louis. You're well, welcome. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. very much. There goes the clown in the air. <laughs> we could have said that about a lot of balloons this morning. <laughs> 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 if you get my meaning. There you go. And there goes Blair in his CNN balloon as well. So is that Blair Kaufman? Blair Kaufman. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, brand new balloon. He flew it the first time last weekend. Oh, really? Brand new. Yes. Wow. And the crowd now has, it's thinned out a little bit on the west, but it yeah. obviously has congregated as it does on the east side and particularly the northeast which is where the final usually the last few special shapes yep seem to be well that's where teddy and lindy and yeah. puddles and splash and and uh, that's also where a lot of the vendors are and they, they get over there to well the balloon discovery center is back this year Well, that's true and that is way out there on the north end of the field a great place to go learn more hands-on about the whole idea of ballooning Great opportunity right next to them on the a little bit to the west of them. From our vantage point, if you're on the field, you may see some little pointy tents out there. That's the chainsaw carving. They do uh, exhibitions starting about 8 o'clock every morning and have an auction at 10 o'clock of the work that they were doing. I uh, was out there checking it out yesterday, and they were frantically making lots of little bear pieces because those are the most popular out there, and their work is all for sale and or for auction. Yeah. And then to the east of the Balloon Discovery Center and all of that, the Artisan's Tent is there with great fine arts uh, opportunities for you to purchase as well. One of the penguins is airborne. Yeah, I can't tell which till they turn around or right. I can see the color of the scoop. Um, good morning, Dolores. Dolores Black, a longtime good friend of mine, saying hello from Texas. It's good to see that you're here with us. We usually catch up each year at, at Longview. Uh, it's a great Texas balloon race, but weren't able to do so this year. Carol Ann Finnan says, looks like penguin. Yes, the penguins are inflating, all three of them. The whole family is here. I only, <laughs> see, I only see two, though. I, I like this. Well, yeah, Tall Steve, and uh, that would be... That's red. Looks like a red scoop. Yeah, so that is. And it looks like eyelashes. Well, but the eyelashes and the red scoop don't go together. I'm trying to remember. Um, they would. No? Yes, they would. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm not thinking correctly. So that would be um, Splash, I think. I, I always get the. the um, I can't, I, can't I can't keep I can't keep them straight. I, I keep I get the genders confused. It yeah. would be yes, that would be splash. Here's a great comment. Dima Lee says, Aren't we all special shapes? Well <laughs> some of us more than others, dear Dina, but there yes. You go. <laughs> I, I guess we are. That's it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Glen Rock, Love Pennsylvania. Loves watching. Love having you watch. Glad that you're with us. You betcha. Montana. The call letters, on, oh, look at this. Here's, again, our audience coming to the rescue. The call letters on the clown balloon are Olaf. Remember Olaf from 
the Disney movie? Mm -hmm. Frozen? Not that's that where I, that's why I remembered Olaf there because it's the registration number. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they just the call it clown. But yeah, they call I it clown. But yeah, yeah, Olaf. they call it clown. But uh, yes, oh, the registration numbers. That's interesting. I knew that Olaf was associated with that balloon somehow. Thanks for the reminder. Yeah, yeah. Our audience once again on top of it, where we're not. Yep, yep. That is perfect. So, Sam uh, Mailer. I hope I said that right. Front row seats from Indiana today. Looking forward to crewing there next year. Well, come on down, Sam. No time like the present. Sunny Arizona checking in. <laughs> Look, <laughs> the sky is still full of balloons out to the northwest. Checking in from Oregon. Another person that originally from Albuquerque. I see saw several of those here this morning. There goes tall Steve now. Yeah, Julia uh, Alvarez Brown says. Puddles was damaged in, in California. Actually, Puddles was destroyed, but there is a new Puddles. Yeah. Uh, puddles was destroyed in a, in a very freak accident and fire. That was strange. Not involving the balloon flying. It was. No. In a parking lot. Yeah, it was to do with the balloon being in a parking lot and the person with some mental issues uh, did damage to the balloon, actually destroyed the balloon. And the but truck. Yeah, but there is a new Puddles. We just didn't see her this There's morning. There's Paul Steve on the screen. For yeah, those of you on the field, the red and white balloon with the blue and white, the blue background, the pennants going over Concession Row. There it is on the screen as well. That's Captain America, Ron Center from Portage, Michigan. Anna Alvarez Rosas is Rosas. the back tall, Steve, in case you couldn't tell. Checking in from San Antonio, Texas, which is a city that always holds a favorite place in my heart. I worked there at WOAI Radio and KENS TV back in, um, oh gosh, 1979 to 81 for a couple of years or so there before I moved on to Dallas. Hi, Sherry in Missouri. Looking forward to seeing you here when you get here next week. Another one from West. A lot of Texans checking in today. That's yeah. good to see. We've got Paul checking in from Houston, Texas. <laughs> Thanks for the great show. You're welcome, Paul. Thanks for joining us. Melissa Terry, the penguin is precious, aren't they? There's the front shot of Alfred on the screen. Okay. As they, as yeah, now I, yeah, yeah, now I, I recognize that. Before, I, could, I wasn't quite sure what it was because yeah. I could only see the backside. Someone's asking when they closed the field. They closed the field when the uh, winds pick up to be too much, or they finally say, you know what, it's late enough, you really shouldn't you really be, need to be landing. You really yeah. shouldn't be getting in the sky at this point. I noticed um, Travis Mathis, uh, a friend from the Carolinas, has been commenting, did tall Steve buzz the tower yet? Nope. And he is familiar with Andrew yeah. Holly <laughs> and Andrew's uh, attempts to buzz the tower, and I will say he has not yet, but he is nearing the point where he could buzz the tower. He's definitely above the 75 foot. Yeah, so he wouldn't quite call it a buzz. Wouldn't call it a buzz, but he's definitely going to probably going to fly over. He'll get close enough to drop a marker on us, maybe. Yeah, but as that's uh, not allowed either. No, as Andrew Holly goes. Remember over. we asked that one year. Yes. We asked Henry if he and Henry wouldn't yeah, let him. No, do it. would no. not let him do no. it. No. no, no. He's waving at us. Yeah. Good morning, <laughs> Andrew. Fly penguin. Hi, Roma. So now, what is that artwork balloon down there I'm looking at? Do you see that on the, the field? The kind of blue one? Yeah. Is that new? Or is that um, Cameron? Uh, oh, Cameron that, that's Walsh. what it is. That's Cameron, Cameron Wall's balloon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great balloon that um, it was created using art uh, painted by his grandmother. We did a nice feature on that balloon in uh, Ballooning Magazine some time ago. Grandma's Legacy. Grandma's Legacy, yeah. Yeah, his grandmother is quite the artist, and um, Cameron took several of her paintings, and they were all uh, then printed on the white fabric and then matched and sewn into a balloon, which is uh, it's a great tribute to his grandmother. There's that new Xfinity balloon you were talking about. Uh-huh.
I don't think we're going to see anybody landing back here today. Uh, I thought maybe earlier we no. might, but it looks like everybody's going out to the rest. Yeah, we only had a couple get yeah. even close enough to make an attempt. Right. But as they would have come down, they would it would have continued to blow them off to the yeah. west a little bit. But, you know, while it's not a perfectly square box, this is a really good box because it takes them out. Directly north of us is the Sandia Indian Pueblo. Yes. And while that is a, a nice place to land, one of the issues there is because it is sacred land, the Pueblo officials really want crews, chase vehicles, and those things escorted in and out. And their resources to be able to provide those escorts is are extremely limited. Are limited. So if we can get the northwest direction, we kind of go off to the side of there. We don't impose right. on the Sandia Reservation, even though they're very friendly about it. Yeah, they're great neighbors great and people. have been for years. Yeah, uh, it's just easier for everybody if right. we can get that that west direction. Yeah, uh, because there is more. There's still more open space. Throughout the rest of the year here in Albuquerque, we fly out in that location exactly. out all the time anyway. Yeah. Um, and part of that, too, is due to the cl um, airspace around the Albuquerque airport. It's classified as a Class C airport, which means there's about a, a five-mile ring around the airport that goes all the way down to the ground, and then it comes out a lot farther. In fact, we're right on the edge of it here at Balloon Fiesta Park. So we get a waiver from the FAA to be able to fly at altitudes here without having conversations with the ATC. Rest of the year, we don't have that waiver. So in order to fly in this space, we would have to be doing some extra communications and things like that. It's easier to go fly out on the west side. One, you have more room to take off and land. And we stay out of the busier airspace of the Albuquerque International Airport. Hi, Crossville, Tennessee and Louisiana. Uh, Penny Billingsley is, uh, says excited to watch from Nebraska. We'll be there on Thursday. Well, good for you, Penny. Come on down. Someone just got a picture of uh, the folks in Tall Steve waving at us, and they're right over here off of uh, just the road that was about a mile south of us. Yeah. Here in Paseo, it looks like. Grandma's legacy is gorgeous, Joe Andrea says. And yes, uh, it, uh, that's an amazing balloon that Cameron put together. It is gorgeous, especially if you can see it up close. And what a great tribute to his grandmother. Um, Fort Collins, Colorado says hello. A lot of people from the USA check in. You know, a lot of times we see a lot of international check ins. Yeah. But it seems more this year, at least the ones that I've paid attention to. And I noticed um, one that said they never even knew this event existed. What? 50 years hello. we've been here. Where the hell have you been? Glad you joined us. Goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as we uh, get ready to wrap down here this morning, let's just kind of uh, run down the week of what uh, the okay. schedule is. What's and, coming and up? those types of things. Yeah. So, of course, Balloon Fiesta Live, which is what you're listening to on the field and watching on the stream. We are here at 6 a.m. Mountain Time every morning, 6 p.m. on the five evening events, which is Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Right. We take Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off. There you go. And we have Mass Ascensions on Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. Competition and mini Mass Ascensions, if you will, right. as we fly off the field and then do competitions in the morning. Glows on all of those evening events. We talked about all of those types of things. But this is really session number one of 14 sessions. So there are 13 more to go over the next eight days. And we will be here bringing you all of it live on Balloon Fiesta Live. If you just tuned in, you missed any of it, you'll be able to go back and watch it on BalloonFiesta.com. If you're here on the field, when you get home, the show will be there waiting for you. So That's you right. can see everything you missed Absolutely. while you were here on the field. You saw stuff probably that we missed, but I can guarantee we got stuff that you missed. Yep. It's, uh, and again, if this is something like the general... Uh, uh, I say gentlemen, whoever it was that commented they didn't know this existed before, they can go back and watch, you know, years and years and years and years, years. Yep. Uh, not decades, but 
we're getting there. More, more than yeah. more than 200 hours of Balloon Fiesta Live coverage. Absolutely. Brought to you. you can even oh. go back and watch the Balloon Fiesta Live that that wasn't a Balloon Fiesta when we did Balloon Fiesta Siesta. There you go. The year of the pandemic. That was fun when I worked. Actually, that was really fun, and it actually worked really well. It was great for me because I just had to commute from my bedroom to my office, you know, from one end of the house to the other. Plus, Ranger, my cat, got to be a TV star that year. He did. So. He did. People <laughs> still asking about Ranger. Yeah, though, so. I need to bring Ranger out here one year, I suppose. Don't um, forget America's Challenge, our gas balloon event still scheduled for hopefully tonight. Hopefully tonight yeah. at inflation at some point uh, mid-afternoon with the uh, launch scheduled at 6. That will be updated at noon. Once the balloons start inflating, the gas balloons start inflating, um, and we get close to what we uh, think will be a launch, we'll um, pop up the live feed as soon as we can along those lines. We're still scheduled to come on the air at 6 p.m. again, Mountain Time which would be uh, 0000 UTC. And uh, no, actually it's not because you always got that wrong. We're seven hours different. Oh, until it changes. There. Uh, no, uh, UTC, you're it's different than Scotland time. No. Well, it then it we'll it just go with 6 o'clock Mountain Time, PM, and you can we're figure it. We're seven hours difference from here to, to Great Britain. Because we haven't changed back to daylight time. No, uh, it has nothing to no, do with daylight saving. It's just seven. Uh, no, it's six hours difference. I know from my because I keep a watch that has two times on it: UK time and local time. Okay. Six hours difference. There's All seven right. hours. We difference talk about here. this every time. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, six o'clock a.m., six o'clock p.m. Yeah. Mountain Standard Time. You do the translation to your uh, to your, your time, time zone. zone as well. And don't forget, for the audience that watches online tonight, we will show you that brand new top secret drone show That's that right. we saw this morning. Yep, yeah. you'll be able to see that right here on the show as well, with our fast track jumps as well. Hey, let's wrap it up here from okay. the rooftop studio, Balloon Fiesta Live, powered by Exxon Mobil. Appreciate their sponsorship. I'm Art Lloyd Jr. I'm Glenn Moyer. We will see you tonight. Thanks for watching.